just got swept by the Yankees, and now they're ticked off a little bit. And they go out there with Blanco. And remember, the other thing for Blanco, he wouldn't be in the rotation if not for Verlander or Keaty's injuries. Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio is the place for expert advice, strategy, and information from the best fantasy sports analysis to win your league. Plus, hear pick-by-pick coverage of live drafts and interviews with top players, coaches, and team executives on Sirius XM 87. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Monday, April the 8th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 2.05 p.m., New York Yankees take on the Miami Marlins. Yankees on Sirius 106. XM 175 and Internet 858. Marlins on Internet 854. 510 p.m. Cleveland Guardians stick on the Chicago White Sox. Guardians on Sirius 209, XM 176 and Internet 847. White Sox on Internet 845. 640 p.m. Cincinnati Reds stick on the Milwaukee Brewers. Reds on Sirius 210, XM 177 and Internet 846. Brewers on Internet 855. 640 p.m. Pittsburgh Pirates take on the Detroit Tigers. Pirates on Sirius 1- Pirates on Sirius 211, XM 178 and Internet 861. Tigers on Internet 849. 7.07 p.m. Toronto Blue Jays take on the Seattle Mariners. Blue Jays on Sirius 106, XM 175, and Internet 868. Mariners on Internet 864. 7.20 p.m. Atlanta Braves take on the New York Mets. Braves on Sirius, think some channels 89, Internet 841. Mets on Internet 857. 7.40 p.m. Minnesota Twins take on the LA Dodgers. Twins on Sirius 138, XM 180, and Internet 856. Dodgers on Internet 853. Spanish Feed on Internet 870. 7.45 p.m. St. Louis Cardinals take on the Philadelphia Phillies. Cardinals on Sirius 139, XM 179, and Internet 865. Phillies on Internet 860. 8.05 p.m. Texas Rangers face the Houston Astros. Rangers on Sirius 160, XM 182, and Internet 867. Astros on Internet Internet 850, Spanish feed on Sirius 162, XM 181, and Internet 871. 840 p.m., Colorado Rockies take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Rockies on Sirius 161, XM 183, and Internet 848. Diamondbacks on Internet 840. 938 p.m., LA Angels take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Angels on Sirius 119, XM 185, and Internet 852. Rays on Internet 866. 9.40 9.40 p.m. San Diego Padres take on the Chicago Cubs. Padres on Sirius 158, XM 186, and Internet 862. Cubs on Internet 844. 9.45 p.m. San Francisco Giants take on the Washington Nationals. Giants on Sirius 137, XM 184, and Internet 863. Nationals on Internet 869. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Monday, April the 8th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball... 2.05 p.m. New York Yankees take on the Miami Marlins. Yankees on Sirius 106, XM 175, and Internet 858. Marlins on Internet 854. 5.10 p.m. Cleveland Guardians take on the Chicago White Sox. Guardians on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 847. White Sox on Internet 845. 6.40 p.m. Cincinnati Reds take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Reds on Sirius 210, XM 177, and Internet 846. Brewers on Internet 855. 6.40 p.m. Pittsburgh Pirates take on the Detroit Tigers. Pirates on Sirius, one- Pirates on Sirius 211, XM 178 and Internet 861. Tigers on Internet 849. 7.07 p.m. Toronto Blue Jays take on the Seattle Mariners. Blue Jays on Sirius 106, XM 175 and Internet 868. Mariners on Internet 864. 7.20 p.m. Atlanta Braves take on the New York Mets. Braves on Sirius, think some channels 89, Internet 841. Mets on Internet 857. 7.40 p.m. Minnesota Twins take on the LA Dodgers. Twins on Sirius 138, XM 180, and Internet 856. Dodgers on Internet 853. Spanish Feed on Internet 870. 7.45 p.m. St. Louis Cardinals take on the Philadelphia Phillies. Cardinals on Sirius 139, XM 179, and Internet 865. Phillies on Internet 860. 8.05 p.m. Texas Rangers face the Houston Astros. Rangers on Sirius 160, XM 182, and Internet 867. Astros on Internet Internet 850, Spanish feed on Sirius 162, XM 181, and Internet 871. 840 p.m., Colorado Rockies take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Rockies on Sirius 161, XM 183, and Internet 848. Diamondbacks on Internet 840. 9.38 p.m., LA Angels take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Angels on Sirius 119, XM 185, and Internet 852. Rays on Internet 866. 940 p.m., San Diego Padres take on the Chicago Cubs. Padres on Sirius 158, XM 186, and Internet 862. Cubs on Internet 844. Get the latest news, opinion, and analysis from MMA to boxing and the professional wrestling world 24-7. Sirius XM Fight Nation. Sirius XM 156. And the SXM app. MLB Network Radio host Xavier Scruggs believes Juan Soto of the New York Yankees is the perfect fit in the Yankee lineup. Fans getting an opportunity to see Soto 
take at bats. These Yankees fans now that get to watch Soto on a daily basis will appreciate his ability to hone in on exactly what he's looking for. And that's ultimately the difference between him and every other player in the major leagues is he is so hyper-focused on not swinging at a pitch outside of his zone. He may give up two strikes in the at-bat, but he is going to wait for you to make that mistake, and he's going to make you pay, and he doesn't have to do it by hitting a home run. We saw it multiple times this weekend being able to use the whole field. Yesterday against the game's best closer and Josh Hader, just taking that line drive the other way to plate the go-ahead run, uh, the appreciation for what he's done to already kind of acclimate himself into this lineup. And we saw this in spring training, too. Like, he was already on his own power stroke getting it going. Um, he's done an amazing job. You think about how important that is, too, with Judge not quite getting himself going yet. If they had this same situation last year with Judge struggling or Judge out of the lineup, you, you didn't know who was going to step up. Mad Dog Sports Radio has the best sports talk in the business. Covering sports with a passion and knowledge you need. Mad Dog Sports Radio. Sirius XM 86. And the SXM app. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM MLB schedule for Monday, April the 8th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In Major League Baseball, 2.05 p.m., New York Yankees take on the Miami Marlins. Yankees on Sirius 106, XM 175, and Internet 858. Marlins on Internet 854. 5.10 p.m., Cleveland Guardians take on the Chicago White Sox. Guardians on Sirius 209, XM 176, and Internet 847. White Sox on Internet 845. 6.40 p.m., Cincinnati Reds take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Brewers. Reds on Sirius 210 XM 177 and Internet 846. Brewers on Internet 855. 6:40 p.m. Pittsburgh Pirates take on the Detroit Tigers. Pirates on Sirius 1. Pirates on Sirius 211 XM 178 and Internet 861. Tigers on Internet 849. 7:07 p.m. Toronto Blue Jays take on the Seattle Mariners. Blue Jays on Sirius 106 XM 175 and Internet 868. Mariners on Internet 864. 7.20 p.m. Atlanta Braves take on the New York Mets. Braves on Sirius think some channels 89, Internet 841. Mets on Internet 857. 7.40 p.m. Major League Baseball play-by-play is now on Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. Why do I love calling this game? Calling this game. Calling this game. Calling this game. Why do I love calling this game? It's because I get a chance to bring some joy into people's lives. Anything can happen on a baseball field. We've got a new game. It's perfectly unscripted theater. Everybody on their feet. Because you never know what you're going to see on a given day. It is Bedlam in the Bank as Bryce Harper has put the Phillies on top. There's just something about baseball on the radio. Something about the way Wood hits leather. A swing and a drive to deep left center. The way leather hits dirt. And he make a play. The way a deep fly ball sounds like it's about to change history. I fly ball to center field. It's hit pretty well toward the wall. Until the cleats hit the grass, hit the crushed brick, and then nothing but sky in a silent crowd. That goes high. Until leather hits leather and 40,000 fans lose their collective minds. In a perfect symphony of chaos. He jumped up on top of the wall, balanced himself, and caught it. The way nothing triumphs a perfectly honest call. The way the right voice can make a moment live forever. Touch them all, Joe. You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life. Outsiders may think this is just two teams. The ball, a bat, and a microphone, but no. For over a hundred years, this has been the soundtrack of the American pastime. He struck it out looking. It's over. It's over. The Rangers have won the World Series. The soundtrack of summer. This is Major League Baseball on the radio. Right now on Sirius XM. All right. Coming in five. Get ready to play. Four. Get up! Get up! Three. Can you believe it? Put your seatbelt on. Wow. My goodness. Major League Baseball play-by-play is now on Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. The Women's NCAA Tournament is on Sirius XM. It is going to be fun. It is going to be interesting. For the best guests. Don Staley. I just want us to be who we've been. And coverage of March Madness. Tune in to Sirius XM SEC Radio from the biggest stars. Reese, put back is good. Nobody wants any part. No part of it. Of Angel Reese right now. To the top teams. We've got you covered through the national championship in Cleveland. It's all on Sirius XM SEC Radio Channel 374 and the all-new Sirius XM app. 
Wake up! Wake up, everybody! This is Steve Phillips from the leadoff spot on MLB Network Radio. Join me and former Major League Baseball players Eduardo Prez and Xavier Scruggs as we react to all the latest news and scores across baseball and have plenty of fun along the way. Steve, you were so right about that. I don't know if anybody else thinks we're funny, but I think we're funny. Why are you putting us or we into this? <laughs> the leadoff spot, weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern on MLB Network Radio, Channel 89, and on the SiriusXM app. Blue Jays fans, your manager. Sean Schneider joins MLB Network Radio's Power Alley every other Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. I got all the confidence in the world in Joe Romano. I've known him for a long time. I know his demeanor. And I, I always say when you're talking about a closer, giving up a couple runs in the ninth inning, it's just so much more magnified than a starting pitcher giving up a two-run homer. Managers at the mic on MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM 89 and the SXM app. Hey, baseball fans, NBA Radio is your home for the best 24 24- Seven hoops talk. LeBron three for the tie. It's good. Hear nonstop talk from our experts every day and the best games every night as we get you ready for the playoffs and the quest to raise the Larry O'Brien Trophy. After 47 years, the Denver Nuggets are finally NBA champions. Don't miss a moment on Sirius XM NBA Radio Channel 86 in the car and on the brand new Sirius XM app. While you're listening to this game on Sirius XM, we're talking about the latest odds and prop bets for this and every, every game on Sports Grid Radio. The under's minus 125. Heavy juice to the under. Every home run hit and every strikeout thrown can change the line. I can't for the life of me figure out how you can favor a team that never wins ever. If you're looking for sports talk centered around the latest odds and prop bets for games, races, tournaments or any sporting event sports Grid radio sirius xm channel 159 march madness is finally here the most for the best analysis that team is going to be a tough out and coverage of the acc teams and the ncaa tournament tune into sirius xm acc radio from the title contenders to the cinderella teams we've got you covered through the national championship in phoenix holy smokes what a play by rj davis it's all on Sirius XM ACC Radio, Channel 371, and the all-new Sirius XM app. 24-7, 365, coverage of all things NASCAR. All things NASCAR happens exclusively on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio, Channel 90. Such a familiar feeling. But this year, for your Toronto Blue Jays, familiar also feels different. Okay. Here at our familiar home, Rogers Center, but with additional renovations to elevate the fan experience. And yes, many of the same familiar faces have returned to your Blue Jays in 2024. But that means a familiar starting rotation that was one of the best in the majors. Kevin Gosman, Chris Bassett, Jose Barrios, Yusei Kikuchi. A familiar flow near the top of the order. Game tying blast from Bo Bichette. A familiar feeling of security with one of the best defenses in baseball. And he makes the catch. But this is where familiar also feels different. A moonshot for Justin Turner. IKF drives the ball to left field. That ball is gone. And all the players have never been hungrier for more. And the Blue Jays win the game. Stop your, your home opener starts now on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Welcome back. After five full months, the energy is back in Rogers Center. It's the 2024 home opener for the Blue Jays. Toronto started the season with a middling 4-6 and six road trip, but welcomes in a fellow 4-6er and sixer and a familiar foe, the Seattle Mariners. Hi, everyone. Happy home opener, and thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Ben Schulman, alongside the former major leaguer and Mississauga's own Chris LaRue. Show Ali is our host and producer today with Tom Young and Austin Mackey as our technical directors. Toronto Blue Jays baseball is brought to you by the local family-owned Crown Rust Control Centers in Hyde Park and North in South London. Protect your vehicle from rust today. Find your local family owned Crown at Crown.com Canada's number one rust protection. The trusty righty 
Jose Barrios kicks off the home campaign for Toronto today after back-to-back -back impressive starts on the road. On the other side, Mariners ace Luis Castillo looks to get back on track in the same building he pitched one of the games of his career during the 2022 wildcard series. The Blue Jays and Mariners open up Rogers Center tonight, and Chris, it, it could not be more of an excited environment here in the building. How does it feel to be back for the first home game of 2024? Well, we got to see these these renovations a few days earlier than most people, but this is one of the best baseball facilities, I think, in the major leagues now. You have the two pretty social areas in the 500 level, and now you have this, this whole renovation that has happened in the last six months, really, to think about the fact that, that this happened all within six months, is it's almost impossible to think about because usually this takes, Mark Shapiro said this, a, a renovation like this takes about two years. They demolished the lower bowl, and we'll get into that. They rebuilt the whole thing. Fans are closer. Angles are better. Cups are being held. There's a whole lot <laughs> going on here that there wasn't the before. The cups are being held, man. Yes, they are, <laughs> in the 100 level in most spots. But the, the most important thing today is the baseball, and the Blue Jays will hand the baseball over to start the home campaign to Jose Barrios, who... I would say Chris has been as sure and as good as any Blue Jays pitcher so far this year. Well, this is I've been looking forward to this matchup for at least a couple of weeks now. Luis Castillo, Jose Barrios, two of the premier right-handed pitchers in the American League. And yes, Luis Castillo has started off on the wrong foot, let's say. He's been he's been hit around in his last start against Cleveland. He gave up 10 hits in five and two-thirds innings, but this is a guy that's been really, really dominant for the better part of seven or eight years now. He's just had a rough couple of games, but Jose Barrios, man, he looks great. He looks like he's in mid-season form. His fastball is being located really, really well. His slider, even his changeup now is just, he's just a dominant pitcher. And I'm still looking forward to this matchup. Luis Castillo and Jose Barrios, I can't wait for this game tonight. Yeah, don't let Castillo's numbers fool you. He is really, really tough. Barrios' numbers really showcase how good he is and how good he's been this year. Both these teams also struggling out of the gate in terms of hitting. Could be a pitcher's duel tonight, but it's baseball, so who knows? Maybe it'll be 10-9. <laughs> to 9. We can't wait to get started, but there are a lot of pregame festivities to still be covered here. Some gold gloves to be handed out, some introductions to be made, a flag to get unfurled, and a whole lot more. So while they take care of that at Rogers Center to get you more prepped, more ready, and more excited for the game, let's go back to baseball control for the first time today. Here's our host, Show Ali. Thank you very much, Ben. Thanks for sending it back to me here in our downtown Toronto studios. The guys, of course, in the fan radio booth on the other side of the downtown core. We'll get you over to them for some more of the pregame festivities at the Rogers Center in a couple of minutes. They're going to introduce the Blue Jays, including the non-starters and the starters in less than 10 minutes. So before we get there, I wanted to highlight a couple of, of fun chats that have been had across the network earlier today. And of course, I think this is always a great place to start. Blair and Barker spoke to Blue Jays president and CEO Mark Shapiro, certainly about the renovations down at the Rogers Center and the ball club and how it's looking these days. So let's hear from the man himself, Mark Shapiro. How important is it for a team to be able to utilize its ballpark for revenue streams, given the way the game is going now? I mean, our most important revenue stream is always baseball. So, uh, you know, I think you want to be able to have other opportunities for concerts. We have a mm -hmm. fairly big one coming up here in November. You might have heard about Taylor Swift. Right. <laughs> uh, but our primary business is baseball, and that's the most important thing that we do here. And the renovation and the spirit of the renovation is all about making this baseball, a specific ballpark, moving it from a stadium to a ballpark, taking a 1980s facility that was largely circular and the same experience everywhere, where the players were removed from the fans to some extent and making it baseball specific, you know, the, where the angles and all the seats, more than you mentioned, down the line everywhere are facing the action. They're bigger, they're wider seats, and, it, and it's a much better experience for all of our fans and for our players as well. Mark, what was the most difficult part of 
getting this thing done as, as quickly as it's been done? Just a massive construction project, one that would have taken probably 18 months conventionally um, that we got done in less than six months. So thousands of Canadian workers here overnight, over weekends, over holidays, tirelessly working to get this done, to get it to the state that it's in right now, ready to play ball. Mark, what have players said about the renovations? And, you know, there's no more excuses, right? You've given them everything, every, you know, every, everything you can possibly <laughs> get them to be the best player they can be. Feedback from the players been what? I'm not a big believer in excuses anyway, but <laughs> uh, we're trying to narrow them down every step of the way between the training facility and here. And that's more, that's more of a byproduct, Kevin, of our philosophy and mine of controlling what we can control. We can control the environment they play in. We can control the facilities they have, the coaches they have, all the resources they've got mentally, physically, and fundamentally. And this is a testament to being best in class, support of our ownership to allow us to have the best facility in all of spring training and now the best clubhouse. So the players got in late last night. I didn't get a whole lot of reaction. I've gotten some really positive ones today. but. We need to get past opening day and all that goes with opening day, settle in and then using the spaces um, and, and really see what the impact is. Mark, did, did you at any point in the off season or even during last season as the season was going on, wonder why the team's offensive performance seemed to be different at home last year than it was the year before? I know we, well, we, we talked about we had Bo Bichette on him and Bo said, hey, I thought it got in our head a little bit. Baseball is a mental game. I mean, I, you know, Kevin can tell you that. Mm -hmm. It's the biggest separator. It separates out players. It makes good players, great players. And it is a challenge. It's a grind. It is a very tough thing to do to hit. And it's, uh, it's tough mentally as well as it is physically. So, uh, but yeah, of course I wondered that. But I also was cautious to draw any conclusions from one year. Mark, the first 10 games of the season, what's your takeaway? What, what have you seen? What have you liked? What have you not liked? Well, my takeaway is to not take too much away from yeah. the first 10 games of the season. I, you know, despite the fact that I'm watching the same thing you're watching, we faced some very good pitching. Obviously, what we faced in Houston wasn't a coincidence. You saw what they did to the Texas Rangers lineup. Um, and that we faced some tough pitching, and we've seen some really positive things. Well, we've also seen some things have to get ironed out. This team's going to be fine. We're going to go as far as our great players take us. Our young players are now in their prime, and they are great players. Everybody in the game knows it. If they play like great players, we're going to be fine. Yep. Mark, what's your sense of the fan base? You know, you've been out and about. What, what are fans saying to you when they see you? I mean, fans are incredibly positive to my face. I think you guys <laughs> hear the other side of things. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> I think uh, he's probably right. Now, knowing that Jeff and Kevin and myself on occasion get to do Jay's talk, that's pretty funny. And I, I would wager that Mark Shapiro was right. If you want to hear that whole conversation, you can, of course, go to the Blair and Barker podcast feed where you can hear uh, B&B chat, the uh, entire conversation, the whole chat with Blue Jays president and CEO Mark Shapiro. b, &B also spoke to Joe Siddle and Shai Davidi, both of Sportsnet Today. So you can find those conversations on the Blair and Barker podcast feed as well. On the renovation side of things, and Ben and Chris had mentioned this off the top, but I actually did get to go down with Ben and Chris uh, down to the uh, the renovated, the openings of the renovations, and uh, the three of us got to enjoy some of the food, which was uh, there. So I hope you guys all get to enjoy that at some point this season. I, I think the most interesting thing and Shapiro mentioned there that uh, it was an 18th month renovation that was reduced to six months, which is pretty incredible. Honestly, if you live in the city of Toronto, it's incredible for literally anything. Honestly, this uh, there's something is always under construction here. So that they managed to do it in six months truly is a miracle. But uh, they also had shown some pictures of them tear like demoing the entire lower bowl and then digging underneath the foundation of the Sky Dome. And all I could think of was... Then the Sky Dome, now the Rogers Center. This building is so old. And I remember they basically said they dug under the, the, the foundation and then they held their breath, which is pretty funny. So I got to say, I think it's uh, pretty exciting that they managed to complete that so soon. And now here we are with the renovated Rogers Center. Let's get down to the Rogers Center and hear a little bit more of the pregame festivities prior to first pitch. That's the difference between us. I'm moving and out of seasons. You know I'm coming for it all. But I never leave, you know the winner never fall. Now you see me, now you don't. 
I'm the elusive. Remember my name? Let me reintroduce you. Step into the madness. Step into the madness. Step into the madness. I stay ahead in the back. I never look back. Now you see me, now you don't. I'm the elusive. Remember my name? Let me reintroduce you. Step into the madness. Please welcome your 2024 Toronto Blue Jays support staff, training staff, and coaches. First, please welcome our support staff. Major League Medical and Training Staff, Major League Director of Health and Performance, Andrew Pipkin. Head Athletic Trainer, Jose Ministral. Major League First Assistant Athletic Trainer, Boon Chong. Major League Second Assistant Athletic Trainer, Drew McDonald. Major League Physical Therapist, John Bigger. Major League Dietitian, Scott Nealon. Major League Massage Therapist, Todd Earl. Mental Performance Coach, John Lannon. Head Major League Strength and Conditioning Coach, Scott Weber. Major League Assistant Strength and Conditioning Coach, Jeremy Trapp. And now the coaching staff. Associate Manager, number 10, DeMarlo Hale. Hitting coach, Guillermo Martinez. In the bullpen, assistant pitching coach, Jeff Ware. Field coordinator, Gil Kim. Bench coach and defensive coordinator, Don Mattingly. In the bullpen, pitching coach, Pete Walker. Third base coach, Carlos Fables. First base coach, Mark Budzinski. Assistant hitting coach, Hunter Mintz. Assistant hitting coach, Matt Haig. Assistant pitching coach, strategy, David Howell. In the bullpen, bullpen catcher, Alex Andriopoulos. Also in the bullpen, bullpen catcher, Luis Hurtado. Pitcher number six, Alec Manoa. Catcher number nine, Danny Jensen. Catcher number 15, Brian Servan. Pitcher number 16, Yusei Kikuchi. Infielder number 20, Daniel Fogelbach. Pitcher number 24, Nate Pearson. Outfielder number 25, Dalton Varsho. Infielder number 28, Ernie Clement. Pitcher number 33, Trevor Richards. Pitcher number 34, Kevin Gosman. Pitcher number 40, Chris Bassett. Pitcher number 44, Bowden Francis. Pitcher number 45, Mitch White. Pitcher number 50, Eric Swanson. 
Pitcher number 52, Paolo Espino. Pitcher number 57, Chad Green. Pitcher number 58, Tim Meza. Pitcher number 68, Jordan Romano. Pitcher number 92, Genesis Cabrera. Pitcher number 93, Jimmy Garcia. And now the starting lineup for your Toronto Blue Jays, managed by John Schneider. Batting first, playing right field, number four, George Springer. Batting second at first base, number 27, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Hitting third, the shortstop, number 11, Bo Bichette. Batting fourth, the designated hitter, number two, Justin Turner. Getting fifth, the left fielder, number 36, Davis Schneider. Getting sixth at second base, number eight, Kevin Biggio. Batting seventh in the bullpen, catcher number 30, Alejandro Kirk. Batting eighth at third base, number seven, Isaiah Kiner Falefa. Batting ninth, the center fielder, number 39, Kevin Kiermeyer. Warming in the bullpen, tonight's starting pitcher, right-hander, number 17, Jose Barrios. Those are your starters for the 2024 Toronto Blue Jays. Actually, it's uh, pretty convenient. Now I don't have to do the starting lineups. There you go. You know who is batting when, who is starting. The Seattle Mariners already had their intros as well. To talk about the product on the field, the players you just heard, Blair and Barker, were joined by Sportsnet's own Shai Davidi for a pregame chat. Here's B&B chatting with Shai about what to expect out of today's matchup and some injury updates as well. Shai Davidi is Sportsnet's MLB insider. He is at the Rogers Center. Shai, thanks for joining us on Blair and Barker. Speaking of injured pitchers, I'm hoping you have some news for us on Eric Swanson and Jordan Romano who are, of course, rehabbing still in Florida. Yeah, they're progressing well. Uh, both uh, General Manager Ross Atkins and John Schneider saying that they came out of their recent uh, outings. Uh, Swanson at low A Dunedin yesterday. Uh, Jordan Romano, a live uh, batting practice. Uh, feeling really well. And I think they're still figuring out the exact nature of the next steps. For Swanson, that could very well be an outing in Buffalo. Uh, maybe that's a, another live BP for Jordan Romano here before he goes off to begin a rehab assignment as well. So those guys are on track for a return. I don't have an exact time frame. I think there's still a little bit of making sure that they're feeling completely fine and they're recovering well after their performances. But it does seem like they're on the horizon exactly when still to be determined. Shy, how did they fix Alec Manoa? It's a good question. So I, I think if somebody had the answer to that, mm -hmm. yep. it would be probably in position to make a good chunk of money right now. I think what the Blue Jays are talking about and focusing on is that the stuff is there, right? He, he was sitting 94 yesterday, uh, up to 96. Uh, the They really like the movement on the slider. It's just how does he harness it a bit more? And the delivery was a little inconsistent yesterday. And... Is that rust? Is that still just, uh, I guess, get lack of game action catching up to him a little bit? Is it something else? 
Uh, they don't seem to believe that there's anything physical happening. So uh, is it a mechanical fix? Is it something else? I think that's the thing that they're working on. But, you know, I think a lot of the discussion with Alec last year was around, you know, how is he going to get some of that power back that was missing from his stuff? And that piece seems to be there. So if that's resolved, then it's how do you take the next step? What do you, what do, you do to get him back into the zone more consistently? And... You know, if you look at that outing yesterday, I believe it was 17 of his first 19 pitches were all balls. And definitely not what you want to see. It stabilized a little bit from there. But I, I think the Blue Jays, you want to see him pitch again, start maybe putting a little bit more emphasis on results. It's, you know, making sure one, physically, are, are you there? Is the power there? That, okay, that box is checked. Okay, now it's let's see if he can compete in a more effective way. I think that will probably be a focal point for his next outing. Shy, how about Bowden Francis in the in the five spot? I mean, you talk about Alec Manoa. There's, you know, room for some, you know, some adjustments and and you know, going out there and doing some better things. Do you think they think that Bowden Francis can give him a chance? You know, not go six innings all the time, but give him a chance when he does start. From a, again, from stuff perspective, it was there, and you saw signs of spring training. Okay, he's turning over a lineup. He's able to be a bit more consistent. And if you think about the two outings, the one against Houston, that's the first inning. He kind of gets jumped a little bit there by the Astros who are, seem to be hunting his fastball, do some damage, and then he's making an adjustment after his recovering. And then yesterday against the Yankees, it's a nice start, first time through, and then loses the zone a little bit. And, you know, the big, big one was Cabrera to me in that third inning yesterday. He really keeps that inning alive and makes it a lot harder to navigate at the bottom of the lineup for the top of the order. Uh, and then he ends up making a mistake to Giancarlo Stanton. If it's a better pitch to Stanton, if he's missing inside there, then we're probably having a different conversation than the one we are right now. But he ends up missing the middle. Stanton hits the grand slam, and what happened happens. So I think the Blue Jays don't want to overreact to things. And talking about it, Francis, after the game, you know, he was determined to sort of not get too down about the way two outings have gone. Uh, trusting in the good things that he was able to do in terms of using his fastball, establishing his curveball. But I think the consistency piece hasn't been there, and so that's something that he's going to be focused on moving forward. Shai, a couple of questions about the lineup. Uh, do we have any idea when Danny Jansen might be available? And I know Ross Atkins just spoke to the media. What do you think his level of concern is with the lineup? All right, so let's start with the first one. Danny Jansen uh, did take batting practice on the field today. He's been hitting off the velocity machine. Uh, he's on the cusp of starting a rehab assignment. I, again, I would think at some point in the next few days, he'd probably be out uh, at probably at AAA Buffalo beginning a rehab assignment. But I think those things are still being finalized and making sure that he's at where he needs to be physically but there's a, at least a horizon for Danny Jansen as well and that'll be a significant boost for the Blue Jays once he is back. In terms of the lineup it was pretty interesting to hear Ross Atkins say that from a process perspective they're seeing some things that they believe will soon start translating and I think that the number that I've kind of focused on early on is sort of the way that they're walking and the discipline that they've showed I think that's a pretty, a generally a, a good leaning indicator of an offense that's going to be effective. You know, if you're if you're not walking, then you're probably expanding and chasing and swinging at a lot of pitches that you shouldn't be. But if you're walking, you're showing some discipline, maybe just not getting results from other areas. I think that's where the Blue Jays feel uh, they have some upside still there. And look, it hasn't been a great start to the season at the plate for Kirk. It hasn't been a great start for Varsho. The Blue Jays are going to trust that there is more in those two guys, and I think that'll help them. Uh, you know, you saw Bichette break out of an 0 for 13, Guerrero break out of an 0 for 11, uh, and have much better at bats in the final two games of that Yankee series. Those two guys get going, then obviously they can carry a team for a period of time. So I think there's obviously some concern because they haven't performed the way they need them to perform, but I think right now the Blue Jays are leaning towards trusting that what they believe about their players is still going to show through on the field. Shy, do you think Clement and Schneider will play more? Well, we're starting to see that a little bit, right? Over the last few days, they've been productive. They've had important swings for this team. I think the balance for the Blue Jays is to, yes, you want to ride the hot hand and who's playing well in the moment, but you also don't want to deviate too far from 
what your process in general is in terms of who do you trust in different spots, what, which guys you like in certain matchups, and to, to not overcorrect there. So I think that's the line they're trying to walk right now. Uh, but, you know, I think, again, just look at usage over the past few days. We've seen a bit more Ernie Clement and David Schneider, uh, and that's because they've been putting up quality at bats. That is Shai Davidi chatting with Blair and Barker. And don't forget, the guys do have Jay's talk today. They will take your phone calls after the final out. Blair will throw out those numbers to call once this game is officially in the books. Before we take a break and get you over to Blue Jays baseball, let's check out the Bet365 standings update. Download the Bet365 app for today's baseball odds and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. 19 plus play responsibly, Ontario only. In the AL East entering play today, the Yankees are playing right now, but the Yankees entering play 8-2 and two to start the year after yesterday's game. The Red Sox are 7-3. and three. The Orioles are 5-4 and four after getting walked off by the Pirates yesterday. The Rays are 5-5, five and five, and after 10 games, the Blue Jays at 4-6. and six. All right, let's take that break. And on the other side, Blue Jays baseball awaits you. Ben Shulman and Chris LaRue are down at the ballpark on the other side of downtown Toronto with the call of Jays Mariners. We're back in a flash. You're listening to Blue Jays baseball brought to you by Crown Rust Protection on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Timber Mart is Canada's building center, a solid neighbor to call upon when you've got a job to do. Your dependable home improvement store that offers the added value of Air Miles Reward Miles with every purchase of $15 or more. Visit TimberMart.ca. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to fixed-rate pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Order pizza pizza. At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. Timber Mart always has plans to help you with your plans. Your home, your cottage, your garage, whatever needs your attention first, check the most visited spot on our website for ready-to-order plans to get the job done with Canada's Building Center. Visit timbermart.ca. They are among the greatest to ever play their sports. Caitlin Clark is the all-time scoring leader. They are legends and icons. Larry Bird hit the chop with no second thought. I don't know how he did it. And you can hear them right now on the all-new Sirius XM app. We are here with Iowa superstar Caitlin Clark. I'm so focused on winning. It's never anything I ever take for granted. Here comes Larry Bird, the Hall of Famer, and he just won Legend of the Year. Legend of the Year, isn't that something? For access to the game's greats, we rely on the leader in sports audio. Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. Hi, this is Ray Hudson. And for all the biggest matches from Club Soccer's Holy Grail... The UEFA Champions League. Tune in to Sirius XM FC 157. Radio Network. It's time. The home opener is here. The Blue Jays and Mariners face off at Rogers Center. Appreciate you joining us today. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue, Austin Mackey, and Tom Young are our technical directors, and Sho Ali is our host and producer. There will be Jays talk after this game with Blair and Barker. Umpires meeting going on right now at home plate. They're handing the lineup cards in. And if you weren't with us for the past 30 minutes, here are the lineups that the Blue Jays and Mariners will send out today. First, with the visiting Seattle Mariners who come into today, four and six managed by Scott Service. It's J.P. Crawford leading off the shortstop. Julio Rodriguez plays center field and bats second. The new second baseman, Jorge Polanco, bats third. And then Mitch Hanniger returning to the Mariners is the right fielder hitting cleanup. Mitch Garvey. DHs and bats fifth. Hard hitting Cal Raleigh catches and bats sixth. Ty France, the first baseman, returns from paternity leave to bat seventh and play first base. Dominic Canzone, the left fielder, bats eighth. And Josh Rojas, the third baseman, bats ninth with right hander Luis Castillo about to make his third start of the year. On the other side, the Blue Jays managed by John Schneider in his third season, second full campaign for Schneider. 
It's going to be George Springer, the right fielder, leading off. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., the first baseman, hits second. Bo Bichette, the shortstop, bats third. The DH and cleanup hitter is Justin Turner. Left fielder Davis Schneider hits fifth. Kevin Biggio, the second baseman, bats sixth. Alejandro Kirk, the catcher, hitting seventh. With Isaiah kiner falefa the third baseman, hitting eighth. And the center fielder, Kevin Kiermeyer batting ninth. Jose Barrios makes his third start of the season in just a moment for the Blue Jays. He and Kevin Kiermeyer got their gold gloves before the game. There was the team gold glove honored as well. The Blue Jays won the first ever team gold glove in the American League. They congratulated, congratulated Luis Rivera on his retirement and a whole lot more. It was a pretty exciting opening ceremony, Chris. Yeah, I mean, it was it was incredible from the, the national anthems to you have that huge Canadian flag from almost pole to pole in the outfield. It was It was something that I've never been a part of as a broadcaster, so it was special to be up here and kind of overlooking everything, especially that big Canadian flag. I've been in the U.S. way too long where I miss seeing that big Canadian flag and I don't know about you, but there's a different energy. I think a lot of people have gotten caught up in the fact that the Blue Jays have been struggling offensively. But to be here today, to see the new stadium renovations, to see the team out on the field, I think there's a little bit of hope in this building right now. You could make a lot right in one good day in baseball, and the Blue Jays will try to do that today. They are 4-6 and six, just like the Seattle Mariners, but they have not played at home yet like Seattle, who has played multiple series at home. Toronto starting with a 10-game road trip, a tough start to begin the season, going to the Trop, then Houston, then New York. They are back home now the roof is closed tonight it's chilly if you had uh, the eclipse on your mind today happy eclipse day as in addition to the home opener but the blue jays are getting ready to go jose barrios is walking back from the bullpen right now with alejandro kirk ready to make his third start of the season we're just waiting a little bit longer here for the players to take the field but you're going to hear this place erupt when it does tons of fans got here early tons of fans on hand for batting practice and you can find very few open seats right now i'm sure it's a sellout and the open seats are people still getting maybe the new maple bacon hot dogs or the jamaican <laughs> beef patties that they have at the ballpark but this is going to be a, a loud one i think especially if the blue jays can get something going early even if it's a big first inning from jose barrios this place could really really get going in a hurry well rest assured those open seats those few open seats are very comfy seats yes, and they probably have padded. cup holders they are probably padded and someone will have a nice time in those big wide seats yeah a little bit tonight. more room as well <laughs> you know it's some some space to stretch your legs out the blue jays are standing on the railing of the dugout just getting ready to go here the lights were going wild blue lights flashing everywhere but it has lit up now at Rogers Center, C.B. Buckner and the fellow umpires are waiting just over home plate. J.P. Crawford is taking some practice swings in the on-deck circle for the Mariners. And a handful of Mariners are doing some handshakes, some jump high fives outside of the first base dugout. <laughs> Blue Jays and Mariners dugouts pushed a little bit down the line now, made a little bit bigger. Power outlets added to them a whole lot more. Ben, are you uh, shocked changed. that we're going to have a, li a little bit of a later first pitch? I know ben you of all you of all people are 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 not shocked by I'm that. I'm not shocked. <laughs> no, I'm I'm fairly pessimistic on first pitch times in general. There was a little bit of discussion back and forth. The coaches sure seem to be getting ready right now. Pete Walker just walked around, fist bump to Marlo Hale, new third base coach Carlos Fables, and the guys are starting to get going here. Daniel Vogelback slap in the front railing. The Blue Jays are getting fired up. Should be just a matter of moments before Toronto takes the field and Jose Barrios takes the mound for the first inning. Here comes Vladdy. 1-0 with a 2-2-5 ERA. Helped the Blue Jays win the opener at the Trop. Pitched very well and was not to blame. Took a no decision in the loss that he pitched in Houston. We're about to get ready for the first inning. Brought to you by Armstrong Bird Food. Bring nature to your backyard with Armstrong. Feeding Blue Jays since 1986. Visit Armstrong Bird Food. 
Barrios.com. You're going to see the fastball from Barrios. You're going to see that big slurve. You're going to see the changeup, especially against the five guys who will bat left in the lineup today for the Mariners. Three left-handed hitters and a pair of switch hitters. And Barrios, coming off a really good season, has been just as strong, if not better, to start this year. Well, and you even look at, look, look at the teams that he's faced, two of the top teams in the American League, in the Tampa Bay Rays, the Houston Astros. He's been, I've said this way too often, but it looks like it's July and he is in mid-season form. He had a great spring training. He looked great there, and he's really carried it over. A lot of the times we think spring training doesn't matter, but I guess in this case it does because he really carried it over and he's looked great for his two starts. Six innings in both starts. The most impressive start he had was at Houston where he had that no decision. J.P. Crawford walks to the plate. The left-handed hitter greets home plate umpire C.B. Buckner. And it is just seconds now until the home opener starts. Barrios drawing in the dirt on the back of the mound. Steps up to the rubber. And turns perpendicular from home plate. Tucks the ball into his glove. Kicks. Releases the first pitch. It's called strike one. And the home season is underway. First pitch today at 7.38 Eastern. Roof closed. Barrio staring out beyond third. Fires home the second one. And it's hit foul into the seats down the left field line. 0-2. And, and are you surprised that he's just absolutely dotted two fastballs to J.P. Crawford? I don't know how he could be with the command that he's had so far this year. Crawford in a quick 0-2 hole leading off this game. Barrios' two-strike pitch. Called strike three. Fastball at the top of the zone, and Barrios sets down Crawford in three pitches. And J.P. Crawford not happy with that call, but that was clearly a well-located fastball at the very top of the zone, just clipping that, that box there. J.P. Crawford, not happy with that one. No. <laughs> Julio Rodriguez bats second. He hits from the right side. Here's the pitch. Called strike one. C.B. Buckner mans the plate today. Brock Ballou is at first. Ben May at second. And Adam Beck umpires third. The 0-1. Line to center field. Kiermaier on the run. Curls in and makes the catch. Started in right center field, had a range towards center, and then come in at the last moment. The gold glover, Kiermaier, makes the play, and there are two outs. Yeah, Kevin Kiermaier accepting his gold glove award before the game, and he made that play look easy. That ball was absolutely scorched from Julio Rodriguez, and he caught that thing like it was nothing. Fourth gold glove in the career of Kiermaier. Here's switch hitter batting left, Jorge Polanco. Two outs, space is empty, top of the first, the pitch. In there, strike one. That's another fastball on the outside edge. He's leaned on that pitch so far. Barrios peeking out at his infield, who shifts to the pull side for the left-handed hitter. A one. High. One ball, one strike. Took Barrios seven pitches to throw his first ball of the game. He takes a breath, kicks, and delivers. Down and away ball, too. And even though that pitch missed outside, you can see just how much action is on that changeup. He's so confident. He's been throwing it a lot more lately. Just so much action. He's going to use it a lot against guys batting left like Polanco. 2-1. Swing and a miss. Went right back to the changeup and fooled him on a pitch out of the zone. 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, that thing started right down the middle. Polanco obviously fooled by it. It ended up being about two or three balls off the plate. That's how much action was on it. Polanco asks for time, adjusts his batting gloves, perks up his helmet a little bit and steps back in the box. Two outs, no score, bases empty, top of the first. The 2-2. Line drive, foul, off the netting down the right field line. A lot less foul territory than there used to be. Roger Center last year would have gradually went from home plate into the corners with the wall's almost banana peeling there. Well, it's a sharp cut now. And there is not a lot of room for the final 50 or so feet in each corner in foul territory. 2-2 pitch again. 
Down and in. Check swing. He did not go. No appeal by the Blue Jays asked for. It's a full count. Polanco almost offered at that sharp breaking ball. That was a back foot breaking ball from, from Barrios. I'd throw that thing again. He'll probably throw a fastball, but I would throw that thing again. Struck out Crawford on a fastball looking. Got Rodriguez to line out. Trying to go one, two, three in the first inning at Rogers Center this season. Payoff pitch. Low ball four. Polanco works a tough walk. And the Mariners extend the top of the first. Yeah, I don't mind that pitch. I think that Polanco's got a lot of power, so you don't want to groove a fastball. He was trying to just flip that thing over for an easy strike three. Just missed. Barrios, not a guy who walks a ton of batters. 184 punch outs to 52 walks in 189 innings last year. His pitch to right handed hitting Mitch Hanniger. In there, strike one. Hanniger's got a light-toned bat just under the barrel, a big stain of pine tar. Runner on first, two down in the 0-1. Breaking ball lands in, it's nothing in two. Guerrero holding on the runner, Polanco at first, but Biggio, the next closest infielder on the right side, is right up the middle. 0-2 pitch. Broken bat, looper to right, Springer going back, makes the catch, and ends the inning. Barrio strands the walk, and the Blue Jays will hit at Rogers Center for the first time in a 0-0 game when we return. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. So that's our company name, two men in a truck. CA. We're lots of men with lots of trucks. So give us a call today. At Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep. Because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. That's why we introduced in-game betting. Because when the game starts, the action doesn't stop. With in-game betting, you can wager on game props, player props, totals, and the money line. And remember, in-game, you can track your same-day parlay with the option to cash out. Check out in-game betting and find out why. It's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 years or older. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. If you or someone you know has concerns about gambling, visit connexontario.ca. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Hurt smacks it down the left field line. This one's got a chance. It's go- gone. On Sportsnet 590, the fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Welcome to the Timber Mart broadcast booth. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue, Show Ali, our host and producer, and Austin Mackey and Tom Young, our technical directors. Luis Castillo on the rubber deals to George Springer, and the first pitch is pounded into the ground to third. Picked up by Rojas off to his left. Throws long, but a stretch made backward by Ty France for the first out. No score, Blue Jays and Mariners, bottom of the first inning. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette will hit this inning as well. For Luis Castillo, it's his third start of the season. He's 0-2 with a 6.75 ERA. Got hit hard by both Boston and Cleveland at home. His pitch to Guerrero. Taken for strike one. Castillo, though, a three-time All-Star who sported a 3-3-4 ERA last year. His 0-1. Guerrero fouls it off. A 96-mile-per-hour heater on the inside part of the plate, nothing in two. Yeah, I mean, that thing is 96, but it's also got a ton of sink to it. You could see just how uncomfortable Vlad was on that swing. Luis Castillo is not the 0-2 with a 6.75 ERA like his record suggests. Guerrero fouls off another fastball, still nothing in two.
The infield defense shifts to the pull side for Guerrero. First baseman Ty France right in between first and second. One out, nobody on. The two-strike pitch. Again fouled off. He's chased a little bit, but Guerrero keeps spoiling these two-strike pitches to stay alive. And that's something he hasn't done over the last few games. He's really been locked in. His his numbers wouldn't suggest that he's locked in, but if you really watch his A-Bs, he's taking a lot more pitches, and he's looking a lot better. 0-2 again. Grounded to third once again. Picked up by Rojas. Long throw to first in time. Two outs. And Vlad's helmet came off, but he actually caught it and was carrying it like a football all the way to first base. I'm not sure I've seen that ever. <laughs> Two down now. Here comes Bo Bichette, another guy who was a little bit slow out of the gates, but all of a sudden has turned it up a notch. He reached base three times, pardon me, four times yesterday and three times the day before that. Two out, space is empty. Castillo steps to his left, kicks and delivers. Called strike one on the inside edge. For Luis Castillo, it's a hard four-seam fastball at 96. He features the most. His 0-1. Breaking ball hit to third once again. A lot of practice for Rojas, who gloves to his left, throws to first. And records the out. One, two, three inning, all on ground balls to third. It's a scoreless game as we go to the top of the second. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your fa local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at Sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Merging influences from Afropop to chamber music, Vampire Weekend helped reshape the sound of indie rock and alternative. As their fifth album, Only God Was Above Us, arrives, hear the story behind it. I just started playing this riff. This had the feel of a good, simple pop song. Alongside nearly two decades of indie classics. Vampire Weekend Radio. All month in the Sirius XM app. This is CJ Nikowski. Join me, Ryan Spielborgs, and Brad Lidge every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern as we give you the player's perspective of what's happening in baseball. He is possessed every time he goes out there right now. This is crazy. There's this energy that certain players bring. It's Loud Outs every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern on MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 89, and the all-new Sirius XM app. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. After the game, join us on MLB Network Radio. We're talking baseball with you all season long on Sirius XM Channel 89 and the Sirius XM app. Mitch Garver digging out some dirt in the righty batter's box. Jose Barrios kicks some dirt of his own on the mound. And we are about to get started in the second inning. Scoreless ball game, Blue Jays and Mariners, home opener for Toronto. Here's Barrios' pitch. Garver waves and misses at a slurve, 0 and 1. I'm Ben Schulman. To my left is Chris LaRue. Jose Barrios did not give up a hit in the first, did walk one batter, but recorded a strikeout as well. The righty with a high leg kick and delivers, bounced it to the plate. Backhand side pick by Kirk, 1 and 1. Garver in his first year with Seattle, a World Series champion last year with the Texas Rangers. The 1-1. Ground ball to third. Coming in, Kiner Falefa fields it on a hop. Crow hops, throws to first. One out. The second inning is presented by Bet365. At Bet365, you can bet live in-game on game props, totals, and the money line. Download the app and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. 19-plus play responsibly. Ontario only. You can hear some boos ring out in the crowd as Cal Raleigh comes to the plate. A very talented catcher who has burned the Blue Jays time and time again in his brief career. Switch hitter bats left the pitch. Foul tipped. Strike one. Yeah, it seems like Blue Jays fans don't really have a short memory. They can remember two years ago, I guess now. <laughs> Raleigh with 
a big home run in game one of the wild card series off Alec Manoa. Also scored the winning run in game two, the 0 1. Called strike on the inside edge. Raleigh jumped out of the way, but that one looked like it was true for strike two. Yeah, that wasn't even on the black. That was obviously a strike. Cal Raleigh trying to steal a strike from C.B. Buckner. Something that you probably can do. <laughs> Buckner, one of the more entertaining umpires behind the plate, in my opinion. Barrios, his 21st pitch of the day. High and outside. Ball one. Cal Raleigh off to a tough start to the year, though. He's probably happy to come here where he's hit so well in his career. He's 5 for 25. That's a 200 average. All singles. 1-2. High ball two. Raleigh cap taps the front corners of the plate. One underhanded swing and puts the bat above his left shoulder, twitching it slightly. The 2-2. Breaking ball hit up near us, but a little bit under our feet. Whoa, hit one of the strings that holds up the netting, or the cables, I guess, would be the, the better word for that, and ricocheted down to the 200 level. I could have reached out and maybe made an attempt. My arms are long enough, Ben. I don't want to lose you down there. <laughs> Here's the 2-2 again. Popped up. This one's headed for the 500 level, left side, and it falls just below it into the box seat. Still 2-2. Two and two. Third baseman Isaiah Kiner-Falefa plays halfway between second and third. Boba Shed up the middle, the 2-2. Two -two. Just inside. Not a bad pitch. Good take there by Raleigh to fill up the count. Yeah, really good pitch from Jose Barrios. He's actually asking C.B. Buckner where that pitch was. A really good sinker down and in that almost clipped the inside part of that plate. 3-2. Fly ball foul again. Good battle here by Cal Raleigh. That was the eighth pitch of the at-bat by Jose Barrios. Rios kicking both of his heels into the mound. Looks in for the sign. Looks over third and delivers home. Check swing. Appeal down to third. He went around on the back door breaking ball. Second strikeout of the day for Barrios. And there are two down in the top of the second. And that's exactly the pitch that he was trying to make against Jorge Polanco. Polanco just held up. And Cal Raleigh there comes through the zone and can't hold up on that really sharp slurve on the inside part of the plate. So that'll make it two outs with the bases empty. No score, top of the second inning. Here's Ty France, one-time All-Star. 2022 was the year. Off to a good start this year, batting 320, although not a lot of power. The pitch. In there, strike one. Barrios has thrown 28 pitches so far, 20 of them strikes. His 0-1. Soft liner to left field. Charging in. Varsho will have to stop. Pardon me, that's Schneider. He'll take it on a hop and throw it back in. First base into the day for either side is a two-out single for Ty France. Yeah, good pitch. Right on the inside part of the play. Ty France actually gets jammed on that pitch. Sinker that comes in on the hands, and he kind of just muscles it out into left field. So France keeps his hot start going. Here's Dominic Canzone. Left-handed hitting left fielder. Kiner Falefa shading in, watchful for the bunts. The first pitch is strike one. Canzone off to a slow start in his first full season with the Mariners, batting 174. The 01. Bounced. Kirk blocks it. It rolls in front of the plate. He'll pick it up on the infield turf. One and one. With the renovations to the ballpark changing the shape of the field so much, it's a new turf carpet out there. They couldn't really make the old one work, and I say old, three-year-old one. They admitted it was a bit sad to let that one go after it being so new, but this is all new AstroTurf. One-one pitch. Breaking ball. Called a ball, looked like it got in there, but it's two and one. And even Jose Barrios kind of 
flips his palms up to the air like, where was that pitch? C.B. Buckner didn't answer him, but I think we all know that that was a strike. That clipped just the top part of the zone. Trying to bounce back the 2-1. Fouled off. Two balls and two strikes. And the thing I notice about this turf, Ben, is it's thick. The old turf was was thinner. Hard, almost. This is yeah. thick. It feels a little bit more like grass. Probably easier on a lot of the players' knees. Remember Andre Dawson? Oh, he's yeah. got t- He's got bad knees now, all those years in Montreal. The 2-2. Swing and a miss. Tied him up with a slurve. Two strikeouts in the inning, and the one hit stranded. Scoreless game, middle of the second at Rogers Center. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Timber Mart is Canada's building center, a solid neighbor to call upon when you've got a job to do. Your dependable home improvement store that offers the added value of air miles, reward miles with every purchase of $15 or more. Visit TimberMart.ca. At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. Timber Mart always has plans to help you with your plans. Your home, your cottage, your garage, whatever needs your attention first, check the most visited spot on our website for ready-to-order plans to get the job done with Canada's Building Center. Visit TimberMart.ca. This is Toronto Blue Jays Baseball. Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Robinson awards for Davis Schneider. Pardon me, Justin Turner. Schneider will bat second this inning. Kevin Vigio do up third. The first pitch to Turner. Call it strike one. First time that one of the new additions, Justin Turner, gets to bat in front of the home crowd in Blue Jays white and blue. The 0-1. Fouled back, nothing in two. I think the crowd was just going wild because Davis Schneider stepped out of the dugout. Yes. <laughs> Schneider waiting on deck right now. Turner facing a no ball, two strike count with no score in the bottom of the second inning. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue, the 0 2. Check swing, topper foul. Turner's so good at fouling off pitches, he does it even when he's not trying to. He's still 0 2. <laughs> he's so good at that, just extending at bats. A really good slider on the outside part from Luis Castillo. Justin Turner kind of half swing that ball into the crowd. 0 2 pitch. Outside, just by a sliver, one ball and two strikes. Turner off to a very productive start to the year. 8 for 28. That's a 286 average. Four doubles and a homer. And the next pitch he sees is rocked to left field. Hooking toward the foul pole. That ball is gone. Or pardon me, it's off the wall. Some new, a little bit obstructed views down the left field line. My apologies. It's just barely not a home run. It's a double for Turner. And thanks to the new ballpark renovations, we can't see the deep corner in right field or left field. And that ball almost hit the foul pole about five feet from going out of this ballpark. And that is the one part that we cannot see from our vantage point. The apo- my apologies for the false start. Here's the pitch to Davis Schneider. It's called strike one. So Justin Turner with his fifth double of the season. <laughs> not his second homer. First that is Blue not Jay your hand. fault, Ben. Ah, it's a little <laughs> bit my fault. No score. Bottom of the second. And the 0-1. Blow. One ball, one strike. Strike. 
Schneider still with the patented mustache. Wears an elbow guard on his left elbow. Points the bat out toward the mound and pinwheels it back above his shoulder. The pitch. Outside, ball two, two and one. And the scouting report is out on Davis Schneider. Ty France, the first baseman for the Mariners, is, is probably almost halfway between first and second. A pull side power hitter. The 2 1. Popped up to the right side. France going back. So is the second baseman, Polanco. In shallow right, he makes a two handed catch. Turner tags, takes three steps, and will head back to the bag. One out. The Blue Jays are back home, and now's your chance to join in on MLB's biggest 50 50 draw in 2023. Jays fans raised more than the next 10 teams combined through 50 50 jackpots. The current take-home prize is already over $710,000. If you're in Ontario or Nova Scotia, visit bluejays.com slash 5050 to join in on the action today. Kevin Biggio to the plate, the pitch. Called strike one. Is the 50-50 only Ontario and Nova Scotia? It's the only place you can get it online. Oh, okay, got it, got it. A peek back at Turner, the 0-1, called strike two. Justin Turner's being held on by the shortstop, J.P. Crawford. Crawford with his hands on his knees in conversation with Turner. Will back up a few steps. One out, two strikes on Biggio. Runner on second, no score, bottom of the second. The pitch. Foul tipped into the glove, and that'll be strike three. First K of the day for Luis Castillo, who's one out away from stranding this leadoff double. And Cal Raleigh was trying to trick Kevin Biggio. He was tapping the ground like a like a slider was coming, like Luis Castillo was going to bounce a slider, and they threw that good hard fastball up out of the zone and got Kevin Biggio to swing through it. Here's Alejandro Kirk, first pitch, called strike. Castillo has attacked a lot so far. 21 pitches, 18 strikes. The 0-1. Down and away. That's just his fourth ball of the day. Unfortunately for the Blue Jays, Luis Castillo looks like old Luis Castillo. He is throwing a lot of strikes, a lot of action through the zone. Good sink on his sinker. The 1-1. Fouled off one and two. I will say, though, I talked to Rick Riz on the radio for the Seattle Mariners here today. And he told me the first two starts, Castillo has looked great first time through the order. And then all of a sudden, second time through the order, things have fallen apart. Runner on second, two outs, the one-two to Kerr. Foul tipped off the mask of Buckner. And the umpire is down on his hands and knees. Cal Raleigh immediately going to check on him. Jose Ministral, the trainer for the Blue Jays, out of the dugout. Buckner back to his feet. But that clearly shook him up, and the other umpires are now congregating to make sure that their crew chief is okay. Yeah, Alejandro Kirk fouled that ball directly back. I'm not sure if it hit him in the mask. It sounded like it hit him in the mask. I think it but, hit Cage. But he crumpled down to the ground on all fours, and that's always scary. Oh, yeah, that hit got him right in the chin in the mask area, and he goes down. Buckner wears the goalie-style mask, and it popped up. It didn't fall off his head, but you could see the impact of the baseball, hear his grunt, and you don't blame him. He went immediately down just outside the dirt circle behind home plate. His mask is off right now. Jose Ministral's talking with him, with the other umpires around right now. We all hope that Buckner is okay. Ministral looks like he's looking into the eyes of Buckner, maybe administering some concussion tests, running his finger back and forth, getting Buckner to track it. I think at this point, C.B. Buckner should come out of this game. If you're if you're at the point where you're trying to test for, test his vision, test for a concussion, he should just come out of this game. He and Jose Ministral in discussion right now. Buckner still hasn't put the mask back on.
He does keep looking at that, that ball and strike ticker that umpires hold. I'm not sure why. Crowd teeming with anticipation to see what happens here. And Buckner's going to remain in the game. Takes a couple baseballs, sticks him in his back pocket. Rogers Center responds. And Alejandro Kirk and Luis Castillo will get set to battle once again. Not sure if Castillo will take some warm-up pitches here as he had a little bit of time off. That ball squared him up. Yeah, that was, that was a tough one to take. Castillo's just going to jump right back into it. Kirk at the plate, runner on second, two outs, no score, bottom of the second, and the one-two again. Low, ball two. Kirk just 5 for 30 to start the year, although he leads the team with 6 RBIs. A single would likely play another. The 2-2. Two -two. Fouled off. Alejandro Kirk not going down without a fight. This is a 6 pitch at bat so far. Yeah, that was actually a good job by Alejandro Kirk to foul that ball off. A good slider on the outer third. and He kind of just sticks his bat out and keeps fighting. Castillo set at the belt. Looks at Turner at second, delivers to the plate, and Kirk rips the ball to the left side. It's down in left field, a base hit. Carlos Fabless gives Turner the wave. Here's the throw to the plate. It's late, and the Blue Jays have a 1 0 lead. RBI single, Alejandro Kirk, his seventh run batted into the season. And when you keep fighting, when you stay alive, eventually the pitcher will give you something to hit. And if he makes a mistake, you have to make him pay. And Alejandro Kirk absolutely drilled that mistake. That fastball up in the zone, he drills it into left field. Good job. one nothing Blue Jays. Rogers Center got on its feet for the first time. Here's Isaiah kiner falefa the eight-hitter. Kirk on first, two outs the pitch. Called strike one. Kirk being held on by the first baseman, France, a right-handed first baseman, who sticks his right foot on the front corner of the bag. A one. Line drive, right field, chasing it to the corner. Hanniger, it's down, and it's rolling into the corner. Kirk around second. He's held at third. Kiner Falefa into second. It's his first double of the season, and the Blue Jays keep cooking here. Second and third with two down. Yeah, we saw the last couple of days. This Blue Jays lineup is starting to show signs of life. They're, fi they're facing a very, very good pitcher, and they're putting together some really good at-bats. Isaiah Connor for Leffa just, just takes that 96-mile-an-hour sinker like it's nothing and just dumps it down the line in right field. A really good piece of hitting by IKF. Here's the left-handed hitting Kevin Kiermeyer. Second and third, two down, big hole up the middle. Castillo's pitch. Outside, ball one. Buckner removing his mask for a moment. Home plate umpire was struck in the face by a foul ball. And he'll put it back on now. The 1 0 to Kiermeyer. Called strike. Whether it was getting his gold glove or being introduced in the starting lineup. I'm not sure anyone got a louder cheer than Kevin Kiermeyer returning to the Blue Jays for his second season. The 1-1. One, one. Fly ball, foul, left side, and that'll go way back in the 100 level down the third baseline. Well, I think oh, we forget that two. even though he's hitting 083, Kevin Kiermeyer for about four months last year was on fire. Started the season off really hot, put together one of his best offensive campaigns, hitting 265 on the year. 1-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Castillo gets out of the jam, but not before the Blue Jays. Score one on three hits. Turner's double cashed in by Alejandro Kirk. 1-0 Toronto at the end of two. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. We're two men and a truck. And we've got lots of men and lots of trucks. Whether you're planning a move to a new home or to a new office down the hall, Big or small, we move them all. We even sell packing and moving supplies. But no matter what you need, we'll do it with a smile. With a 96% referral rating and the professionalism you can trust, the choice is simple. 
So when you're planning your next move, call two men and a truck. Two men and a truck, the movers who care. He doesn't throw fastballs, he throws fuego. He has the focus and agility of a Shaolin monk. He's not just a pitcher, he's a machine. He defends the field and our city's honor. He is one of the best defensively out of the middle. Jose Barrios is as good as gold. Celebrate Jose's golden accomplishment with the Jose Barrios Gold Glove Bobblehead. Friday, April 12th. For tickets, visit BlueJays.com. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. That's why we introduced in-game betting. Because when the game starts, the action doesn't stop. With in-game betting, you can wager on game props, player props, totals, and the money line. And remember, in-game, you can track your same-day parlay with the option to cash out. Check out in-game betting and find out why. It's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 years or older. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. If you or someone you know has concerns about gambling, visit connexontario.ca. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Swing and a miss, strike three. He keeps this game tied on Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Top of the third inning, Blue Jays on top. 1-0 Toronto after Alejandro Kirk's RBI single and Jose Barrios will take on the nine-hitter for the Mariners. It's Josh Rojas. I'm Ben Shulman alongside Chris LaRue. Show Ali, our host and producer today. Austin Mackey and Tom Young, our technical directors. The right on left pitch is outside ball one. Roof closed, but bright lights illuminating Rogers Center today. Corners in against Rojas. The 1-0. Swing and a miss. Waves through a changeup, one ball, one strike. Yeah, really good changeup from Jose Barrios. Good 1-0 pitch and a fastball count. It'll be an important pitch for him this inning. Left-handed hitting Rojas up first, then J.P. Crawford next. The 1-1. Another change called strike two. Rojas off to a hot start in his first full season as a Mariner. Seven for his first 17. That's 4-12, his batting average. 1-2. Well hit ball to right center field. Kiermaier going back. Springer as well. Kiermaier chases it down on the track. Crashes into the wall. One out. This third inning is brought to you by the local family-owned Crown Rust Control Centers in Hyde Park and North and South London. Protect your vehicle from rust today. Find your local family-owned Crown at crown.com. Canada's number one rust protection. Nice play there by the four-time gold glover, Kevin Kiermaier. It's so fun watching him just covered distance like that like most most guys make that catch but it's just impressive to see how fast he actually gets to that baseball first pitch to jp crawford called strike one and i find the impressive things for him are not necessarily the diving and jumping catches but a catch like that where others might have to dive or jump he runs it down while staying on his feet one out and the 0-1 to crawford outside He didn't only run it down. He actually overran it. Yeah. <laughs> Reach back a little bit. The 1-1 pitch. Hits softly on the ground to second. Biggio to his left. Picks it up. Tosses it over to first. Two outs. Base is empty and a 1-0 lead for Toronto in the top of the third. 2022's American League Rookie of the Year, Julio Rodriguez bounces into the righty batter's box and fastens in that back right foot. Rodriguez with two turns of the bat. Now waggles it high above his head. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Rodriguez turns and asks for confirmation from C.B. Buckner that that would have been a strike anyway. It would have. Here's the 0-1. Bounce to the plate. One ball, one strike. Julio, Julio Rodriguez is one of my favorite players to watch. He's so he's so fun, just like Acuna Jr. You know, like they just bring the crowd to life. 1-1 is cut on and missed. 1-2. 
Rodriguez has power. He has speed. He has emotion. But he's had a rough start to the year. After the line out in the first eight for his first 40, that's a 200 average. One two pitch. Ground ball up the middle. Barrios ducks out of the way. Biggio picks it up in the middle of the diamond, throws to first. And that's a one, two, three. Top of the third for Barrios. Midway through the third, it's one nothing Blue Jays. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Sirius XM's 2024 NFL Draft Preview Show. Experts from NFL Radio, College Sports Radio, and Fantasy Sports Radio analyze the top prospects in the NFL Draft, covering each player's time in college and how they'll transition to the National Football League. Roma Touchdown, Washington! The Sirius XM Sports 2024 NFL Draft Preview Show, Wednesday night at 7 Eastern on College Sports Radio Channel 84 and NFL Radio Channel 88. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. We're back on the track. Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. It's the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. From Texas Motor Speedway. On Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. In the car. And on the all-new Sirius Sirius XM app. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yeah. This is Bob Kendrick, president of the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum and host of the Sirius XM original podcast, Black Diamonds. Hear stories about the legends of the Negro Leagues and conversations with the all-time greats they've influenced, like five-time World Series champion Derek Jeter. I don't care what race you are. You need to know your past. This is U.S. history. It's not just baseball history. Hear over 70 episodes of the award-winning Black Diamonds podcast, available now on the Sirius XM app or wherever you get your podcasts. In season or out of season, the number one place for college sports is Sirius XM College Sports Radio, Channel 84. Radio Network. Bottom of the third inning, one nothing Blue Jays. George Springer leads off for Toronto, his second plate appearance of the game after grounding out to third back in the first. Luis Castillo twists and deals, and Springer hits a ground ball to third. Fielded deep in the hole by Rojas, falling into foul territory, bounces it to first in time. One out. Welcome to the Timbermart broadcast booth. Don't strike out on your next home improvement project. Your team at Timbermart has the great advice and the products you need so you'll get the job done right. Knock it out of the park and win the day with Timbermart, Canada's building center. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. comes up in the Timbermart broadcast booth. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. That was a heck of a play from Josh Rojas. Rojas can hit and he can also feel that was an incredible backhand in foul territory off balance throw all the way to first base not many guys can make that throw first pitch to Guerrero is low ball one so this is the second time through for the Blue Jays leading one nothing with one out and the base is empty in the bottom of the third the 1-0 swing and a miss by Guerrero took a big hack there at the off speed pitch one and one And mentioned earlier, the numbers drastically changed this year. Second time through for hitters against Castillo. The 1-1. Fouled off sharp into the 200 level right side. 1-2. First time through this year, and it's only two starts. Batters have hit 177. Second time through, they've hit 412 against Luis Castillo. 1-2 pitch. Fouled off. And because it's such a small sample side, you don't want to read too much no. into it. But it is a talking point, and it is something that if I'm Luis, Luis Castillo, I'm wondering why that's happened over the last two starts. It's probably rarely happened in his career where he's had that, where he's had two bad starts in a row like that. One-two pitch yanked down and away. Last year, hitters were hitting 194 first time through the order, 250 second time through the order. A much more natural increase. You're going to see some sort of bump a lot of the time when guys have seen you once. Next pitch delivered low. It's a full count. Blue Jays ahead, 1 0. One out. Nobody on the bases. The 3 2 to Guerrero. Reaches out and pokes it foul to stay alive. 
And that's something that we haven't seen that often from Guerrero this season is he, he's fighting with two strikes. He kind of just early on in this season, and granted it's still, it's, it is still early, but he just gives up. And he, and he, and he kind of just 3-2 again. Bounced down the third baseline. Tough play for Rojas. Fields it, but he's got no throw. That was a swinging bunt from Guerrero. Not the typical hit for Vladdy, but he'll take the one-out single, and there's a runner on for Bichette. Yeah, Vlad will gladly take that hit. In the box score, that's just a single. It doesn't doesn't tell you where the ball went, but that ball was, was not hit very hard, but he runs hard down to first base and beats that ball out. After a slow start, that's now hits in three straight games for Vlad. Here comes Bo Bichette, who's 0 for 1 with a ground out to third. 1 0 Toronto. One out, bottom of the third inning, the pitch. Bichette takes right at the bottom of the zone, strike one. Mark Budzinski, the first base coach, walks up and tells something to Guerrero, who takes a three step lead. Big shuffle off first. The 0-1 is hit well to right center field. That ball is trouble. It's off the wall. Guerrero loses his helmet around second. He'll get stopped at third. Bichette slides in a second with his helmet off. It's a yard sale in the middle of the diamond, and it's second and third for the Blue Jays with one out. And that ball was about four feet from getting out of here in right center, and Bo Bichette just absolutely rips that fastball into the gap in right field. That is a really good sign. He's starting to use the whole field, and he's got really good power to right center there. And when you, when when he's going well, those are the kind of hits that he's getting. Oh, popping up, dancing back to the dugout. Big smile for him. His fourth double of the season, despite it being just his seventh hit. We haven't seen him smile very often this season. That's a good sign that he's smiling out on second base, having fun. Even Vlad at third base, kind of yelling, yelling to him. When this team is going well, they are having fun. That's the most important thing. Cal Raleigh talking to Luis Castillo right now, who's not having as much fun. Got some hard luck on the swinging bunt single by Guerrero, but gave up another double, the third of the game so far, with just one out in the bottom of the third inning. Well, Ben, it's the second time through the order. It is the second time <laughs> through the order, and Turner got him first time through with a double last inning, came around to score. Infield, even with the baseline on the right side, a little bit behind it on the left side. Second and third. One out, one nothing, bottom of the third. The pitch to Justin Turner. High and outside, ball one. Turner with five driven in this year, a career high 96 RBIs last year. The 1 0. Outside again, two balls, no strikes. And this is why the Blue Jays signed Justin Turner, to produce runs. Come up to the plate, less than two outs, two runners in scoring position. The Blue Jays struggled in these situations last year. This is why he's getting paid what he's getting paid. Situations like this. 2-0 pitch, waved at and missed, 2-1. and one. Turner with the Blue Jays on a one-year $13 million deal. Last year with runners in scoring position, he hit 338. On the year, he hit 276. The 2 1. High ball three. They haven't thrown a pitch in the zone yet to Justin Turner. And as crazy as this might sound to some, you do wonder if they're pitching around him to get to David Schneider. Would also put some forces on. 3 1. High ball four. Yeah, I think they were pitching around him there, at least trying not to throw anything in the heart of the plate. Justin Turner, he's too good to fall for that. But now you have the force out at any base. The Seattle Mariners would gladly take that. You have the double play in play now. But J Davis Schneider has to has to really wait for his pitch. He can't let this situation get too big. The crowd, the base is loaded. This is probably one of the first times he's been in a situation like this. Schneider playing 35 games last year. Broke camp with the team this year. Takes the first pitch. It's outside ball one. And what sometimes gets lost in the mix of all his great power, and it is great, is that he's also got a really keen eye. Schneider looking out through his rec specs. Rests the bat on his right shoulder, the 1-0. Called strike at the bottom of the zone.
Bases loaded, one down, one nothing Blue Jays, bottom of the third. 25-year-old from New Jersey, Davis Schneider, in just his 43rd Major League game. The 1-1. Swing and a miss. Chased a high fastball, tilts his head to the side. It's 1-2. and two. And he's the guy that will tell you that's his kryptonite. He said that after Josh Hader threw that slider to him in Houston. He has to lay off th that pitch if he's going to find success. 1-2 offering. Outside, back pick to third. Guerrero dives back in safely. Rojas snuck behind him. And Raleigh, who's got a cannon of an arm to go along with his big power at the plate, gave the Blue Jays a scare, but Guerrero back safe, and it's a two-ball, two-strike count. I've never loved that play. Runners on second and third. You throw that ball away, that's two runs just like that, especially with a guy like Luis Castillo on the mound who can easily get out of this. Bases loaded, one down, infield at double play depth. The 2-2. Poke to center field, charging in Rodriguez. It's down for a base hit. Guerrero in to score. Bichette coming home. The throws to the backstop. He's in, and the runners are at second and third. Two-run single, Davis Schneider. He's standing on second. Turner's on third. 3-0 Blue Jays. Davis Schneider does such a good job with two strikes of protecting that outside corner. A good slider from Luis Castillo. And Davis Schneider just sticks the bat out and dumps it into center field. Two big runs for this Blue Jays team. And again, second time through the lineup, and Luis Castillo is giving up some base hits. That's going to prompt another mound visit, this time with pitching coach Pete Woodworth coming out to talk to Castillo as well. For Davis Schneider, it's his sixth and seventh RBIs of the season. I believe they'll get Julio Rodriguez with an error there that helped advance Schneider to second and Turner to third. They might just say they advanced on the throw anyway, but Rodriguez airmailed that ball by a lot. But here's a big at-bat for Calvin Biggio to extend this lead. Runners on second and third and less than two outs. You can't strike out here. You have to put the ball in play. Only one out, 3 nothing. Blue Jays, bottom of the third. Infield comes in. It's a tag play at the plate. The pitch. Biggio takes high. Ball one. Castillo wanted that one. It was very close. Put his hands on the back of his head after it. He's a little bit frustrated. Yeah, I think he's just begging right now for a call just because he's his fastball and his slider are just scattering all over the zone. His 1-0. Downstairs, check swing appeal to third. No swing, says Adam Beck. Two balls in the favor of Kevin Biggio. Two runs in this inning thanks to Davis Schneider's two-run single. Guerrero and Bichette scored. Here's the pitch. Down and in 3-0. Alejandro Kirk waits on deck, who knocked in the first run of this game. The question is, does Kevin Biggio have the green light here? I give him the green light. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. 3-0. Called strike. I think he did not. Because that pitch was pretty down he the was, middle. He was statuesque <laughs> right there. He had no intention of swinging the bat. Shortstop J.P. Crawford with both feet on the infield turf. Everyone else on the dirt. 3-1. Fouled back over the netting and into the seats. 3-2. and two. Schneider on second. Turner on third. Outfield playing deep. 3-2 pitch. Pop up behind third. Rojas going back into foul territory. Makes the catch just before the side warning track. There are two down. Both runners have to stay put. By the way, just to circle back for a second, they did get Julio Rodriguez for an error on that throw he made to the plate that helped advance, helped advance Turner to third and Schneider to second on Davis Schneider's two-run single. Three-nothing Blue Jays, still two in scoring position. Here's Alejandro Kirk, one for one with an RBI single. Infield backs up. And the pitch. Called strike. Looked above the zone, and Kirk talking to C.B. Buckner about it, but just nods his head. He's got to maintain a relationship with Buckner throughout the game as the Blue Jays catcher. The 0-1. 
Called strike. That one definitely in there, and it's 0-2. Yeah, that's a tough pitch. Even if Alejandro swung at that, that good sinker at 96 miles an hour at the bottom of the zone. Probably a good take from Alejandro. Two on, two out, three nothing. Two strikes in the pitch is bounced. Good stop there by Raleigh. Calls for time and throws a new baseball out to Luis Castillo. IKF getting ready on deck should the inning continue. Lots of space on the right side for Kirk. Ty France, the first baseman, is playing in between first and second. Luis Castillo is going to step off the rubber, stretch out his arms, and adjust his cap. Back on it now. In the set. Glove at his belt. The one-two. Fouled off. Kirk pops it up into the seats down the first baseline. A nice catch on the ricochet. Hit one fan's hands. Second guy came in to clean it up. That second guy needs to give that ball away. That ball was that. The, hey, he the made first the guy. Play. The first guy got the brunt of that. First guy doesn't do the <laughs> ball. He didn't make the catch. The one two, swing and a miss. Strike three. Kirk goes down, but the Blue Jays add to their lead. Davis Schneider singles in a pair. It's three nothing Toronto at the end of three. You're listening to Blue Jays baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at Sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. They are among the greatest to ever play their sports. Caitlin Clark is the all-time scoring leader. They are legends and icons. Larry Bird hit the chop with two seconds left. I don't know how he did it. And you can hear them right now on the all-new Sirius XM app. We are here with Iowa superstar Caitlin Clark. I'm so focused on winning; it's never anything I ever take for granted. Here comes Larry Bird. The Hall of Famer, and he just won Legend of the Year. Legend of the Year, isn't that something? For access to the game's greats, we lie on the leader in sports audio. Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. Are you regretting eating that gas station hot dog? Yeah, we know. We've been there too. This is a message for baseball fans like you. Did you know that you get a channel that's talking baseball 24-7 as part of your Sirius XM subscription? What? Our lineup includes shows hosted by former big leaguers and executives. Plus, you'll hear from 17 managers each week. MLB Network Radio is on Sirius XM Channel 89. Or just search MLB Network Radio on the SXM app. Sirius XM Sports. We're more than just a game. There is no competition in soccer quite like the UEFA Champions League. And it's on Sirius XM FC. Kylian Mbappe delivering when it matters most. The stakes are higher now in the knockout stage where one goal can transform a club's trajectory. Jim Bellingham's driving, driving scores! And one performance can turn a star into an immortal. Erling Haaland has five! It's the Champions League knockout stage and all the top matches are on Sirius XM FC 157 and the all-new Sirius XM app. Jays fans, this is George Springer, and you're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on Sirius XM. George Springer airborne snatches it out of the sky. Network. 4th inning of work for Jose Barrios. This 4th inning brought to you by Bet365. Download the Bet365 app for today's baseball odds and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. 19 plus play responsibly Ontario only I'm Ben Schulman to my left is Chris LaRue three nothing for the Blue Jays thanks to Davis Schneider knocking in the last two for Toronto a single that scored Guerrero and Bichette here's Jorge Polanco switch hitting infielder leading off the pitch outside ball one Polanco bats from the left side today against Barrios he was a guy that at a time was linked to the Blue Jays during the offseason. Would they go after him? The 1-0. Ripped foul over the netting. A hot shot into the seats. 1-1. One one. Because he can play second, he can play third. And he's hit for power at times in his career. Switch hitter. Very versatile. In 21, he had 33 homers yeah. and almost 100 RBIs. It's a good player. First year over from Minnesota. 1-1. One, one. Outside. Ball 2. Seattle picked him up in a trade, sent four pieces the other way, including Anthony Disclafani, who they actually traded for and then traded away without ever using. Next pitch in their strike two. And Justin Topa, one of their feature relievers last year, along with two prospects. 2-2 two -two count now against Polanco leading off. Barrios kicks and delivers. 
And his former teammate bounces it to first. Vladdy on the backhand side flips back to Barrios. The Gold Glover stops on the bag. One out. Let's take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard brought to you by St. Louis Bar and Grill. Devilishly good since Toronto first raised the trophy in 92. Join them for wings, ribs, beer, cocktails, and catch every play at your local St. Louis Bar and Grill. Download the app or visit stlouiswings.com for more details. Always devilishly good. Before we look elsewhere, here at Rogers Center, Mitch Haniger is in the righty batter's box. One out, base is empty. The pitch. Grounded softly to third. Charging in Kiner Falefa. Throws on the run to first. Two outs. Blue Jays up 3 0 at Rogers Center with two down. Nobody on in the top of the fourth. A final already in the AL East today. The Yankees, who are off to a great start, dominated the Marlins, who are off to a brutal start. The Yankees move to 9 2 after a 7 0 win over the now 1 10 Miami Marlins. Juan Soto with a home run. Anthony Volpe with one as well. And three hits from Alex Verdugo. First pitch strike to Mitch Garver, 0 1. I tell you what, though, even without Garrett Cole, that Yankees team is very, very good. Nine and two. Record speaks for itself so far. The 0-1. And there's strike two. Two outs, bases empty. Three nothing Blue Jays. Top of the fourth. Our out of town scores brought to you by St. Louis Bar and Grill. Red Sox and Orioles are off on this Monday. Next pitch. Bounce to the backstop. One ball, two strikes. And the Rays will get started later. They're on the West Coast at Angel Stadium in Anaheim, California. Zach Eflin, the opening day starter for the Rays, goes on the mound against Tyler Anderson. One-two pitch to Garver. Fouled off his front leg. It bounces behind him and out of the dirt circle. Still one ball, two strikes. Chris, your Pirates are killing it. <laughs> They're up 7-2 to two on the Tigers. Well, I'm glad you stopped saying my Marlins. That's for yes. sure. One-two pitch. Outside, two balls, two strikes. 7-2 to two lead they have right now over the, t- over the Tigers. Andrew McCutcheon with two hits. Jack Sawinski with two hits. Connor Jill with two hits. Jared Triolo with two hits. Big day for the Buccos. 2-2. Garver fouls it off himself once again. I'm just happy that Andrew McCutcheon is back in that lineup. Yeah, that's been awesome to see this year and last year. Feels right. I mean, hey, you know, he hasn't always been the big driver of it on the field. But they made a big win improvement last year, and they're looking really good to start this year. We'll see if it carries. Barrios is offering to Garver. Popped up a kilometer high over the plate. Kirk. Getting called off by Guerrero, getting called off by Kiner Falefa, who makes the catch right in between the mound and plate to end the inning. One, two, three again for Barrios. He's retired eight in a row. Middle of the fourth, three nothing Blue Jays. You're listening to Blue Jays baseball brought to you by your local family owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to fixed rate pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to fixed-rate pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Order pizza pizza.ca. We're two men in a truck, the movers who care. You never know when cardiac arrest can happen. That's why each and every one of our trucks carries a life-saving Mikey defibrillator as part of our Mikey on Board program. Whether we're on the highway or in front of your house, we're prepared to help anyone whose heart may skip a beat. The Mikey Network has saved many lives, making Mikeys accessible to the public. And now they're on board our trucks. We're two men in a truck. Two men and a truck, the movers who care. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. 
That's why we introduced in-game betting. Because when the game starts, the action doesn't stop. With in-game betting, you can wager on game props, player props, totals, and the money line. And remember, in-game, you can track your same-day parlay with the option to cash out. Check out in-game betting and find out why. It's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 years or older. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. If you or someone you know has concerns about gambling, visit connexontario.ca. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. A game-tying blast from Bo Bichette. On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Bottom of the fourth inning at the home opener at Rogers Center. IKF Isaiah Kiner Falefa leads off for Toronto. Luis Castillo, the right-hander, rocks back, delivers, and misses down and away 1-0. 3-0 for the Blue Jays. IKF with a double in his one at bat today. Next offering. Chopped foul. Carlos Fables, the third base coach, gets out of the way. It's one and one. Welcome to the Timbermart Broadcast booth. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. The one ball, one strike pitch. Handcuffs IKF, who just hits it right into the middle of his feet. One ball and two strikes. He'll pick up the baseball and toss it to C.B. Buckner. I was actually unsure where that ball went. <laughs> it was hidden. Because he's wearing white cleats, so I couldn't see where the ball went. 1-2. Foul back. Because the Blue Jays have three runs on six hits and a walk to go along with it, the pitch count is a little bit elevated right now for Luis Castillo. No outs in the bottom of the fourth. His 70th offering. Inside, a little bit low as well. Two and two. You contrast that to Jose Barrios, who's completed four innings. He's only thrown 58. 2-2 two, two pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. IKF down to a knee. He's the fourth strikeout of the day for Luis Castillo. And even though Luis Castillo has given up six hits and three runs, his stuff is still very good. That's the positive takeaway for the Seattle Mariners. If I'm them, I'm thinking this storm will pass. He'll continue to be the guy that he has been for six years. First pitch to Kevin Kiermeyer inside 1-0. and He still has that really good fastball. He's just missing his location just by a little bit, falling behind in a few counts. He'll get back, he'll get back on track. The 1-0. Kiermaier hits a line drive to right. That's down for a base hit. Kevin around first, thinking about second. Stops and goes back as Hanniger gets it back into the infield. Big fist pumps from Daniel Vogelback at the front <laughs> of the dugout. That's the third hit of the year for Kiermaier. Blue Jays had hit him up in the lineup a little bit, but it moved him back to that familiar nine spot. And he has at the table now for George Springer. 0 for 2 today, retired on a phenomenal play at third by Josh Rojas in the third inning. First pitch. Down and away. Ball one. And the thing about hitting is that it's contagious. When everybody's going, it feels like it feels like it's just contagious and, and, and everybody can do it. 1-0. Check swing, called strike. I think he went around, but that was definitely not in the zone. It's one and one. There is a huge hole on the right side. I wouldn't be surprised if George Springer tries to go the other way. Ty France is holding on Kevin Kiermeyer. The one one. Down and outside, two balls, one strike. And Jorge Polanco is playing almost behind second base. That is almost a 90-foot hole on the right side of this infield. Well, Springer had four hits to go along with three walks in the Yankee series, and three of the four hits went to right field. Turn and a throw to first. Kiermaier back with a dive. Notable that Kiermaier has attempted and stolen the only base for the Blue Jays this year. It's also notable that Luis Castillo caught him leaning, yeah. and he had to quickly get back to first base. One out. 2-1 count, 3 nothing. Blue Jays, bottom of the fourth, the pitch. Springer lifts a fly ball to shallow right field. Hanniger jogging in, curls a bit to his left, makes the catch. Two outs. Mm-hmm. 
that'll bring up Vladimir Guerrero Jr. One for two today. A little bit fortunate on an infield single, but he set up the two-run inning in the third, singling before Bichette doubled, Turner walked, and then Schneider drove in two runs with a single. Runner on first, three nothing Blue Jays. The pitch to Vladdy. Kiermaier takes off, swing and a fly ball down the right field line, slicing toward the seats, and it's off the top of the netting and into the seats. 0 oh, and 1. There's less foul territory, and by fractions of an inch, Guerrero was saved there. Yeah. The thing that I miss about about not having a net is you really miss out on the great plays into the stands. The guys diving in, eating popcorn from the po- <laughs> from the from the buckets. Of course, it's a lot safer. More for the liners than the pop-ups like that. The 0-1. Carrero fouls it off, and it's 0-2. I mean, I remember, I'm sure many who were watching the Blue Jays during the mid-2010s do as well, a phenomenal play by Josh Donaldson in his MVP season where he just dove with reckless abandon into the seats at the Trop, caught it, landed on some people. 0-2 to Vladdy. Kiermaier takes off again, pitches down for a ball, throw down to second, not in time. Kiermaier swipes his second base of the season. Guerrero now with a one-ball, two-strike count and a chance for Vladdy to drive in a run on a single. And we saw that on Sunday with Anthony Volpe, who stole second and then quickly stole third, and he wouldn't have scored a run if he hadn't have done that. Kevin Kiermaier, the more he gets on base, the more he needs to do that. Well, run on contact, the one-two. Down and away, two and two. By the way, mentioning Josh Donaldson, in the clubhouse today talk to some guys some eyes go up people are looking around the 2015 mvp just walks right through the clubhouse here (laughs) for the home opener 2-2 to vlad line drive right center sinking and down kiermaier around third he'll score easily vladdy digging for second it's fumbled out in right center and he slides in helmetless with a double two for three day and an rbi for vladdy and if Kevin Kiermeyer doesn't steal second base on the previous pitch, he might not have scored on that pitch. I think people forget when you when you manufacture runs like that, it, it it's so invigorating for the team. And then Vlad sees that guy standing at second base and he wants to drive that run in. He takes that ball the other way and makes a good swing. Guerrero had hits in three straight. He now has extra base hits in three straight as well. Here's Bo Bichette. One for two with a double and a run scored. The pitch. Called strike one. Four nothing Blue Jays. Bottom of the fourth. Vladdy not really being held on. Jorge Polanco's about 10 to 15 feet behind the bag. Leaning in. Now steps back. The 0-1. Swing and a miss by Bichette. Really opened up there on a breaking ball down and away. Nothing in two. Some movement in the Mariners' bullpen right now. No throwing yet. 85th pitch for Castillo. Down and in. Ball one. One ball and two strikes against Bo. Man, that was a good swing from Vlad. Taking that good pitch and just driving it the other way. The more I see that, the more I'm... I'm excited about what he's going to be this year. Vlad's on second, 4-0 Toronto. The 1-2 with two outs is swung on and missed. Strike three. Bichette goes down, but the Blue Jays add one more. The Kiermaier single cashed in by Vladdy's double. It's 4-0 after four. You're listening to Blue Jays baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rush Control Center streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The greatest guitarist is Eddie Van Halen. What about Prince? You have to include Slash and Jimmy Page. B.B. King and Bonnie Raitt. The Edge changed everything. The debate continues with rebellious riffs and six-string solos on the SiriusXM Guitar Greats channel. All hail International Guitar Month. SiriusXM Guitar Greats on channel 107 and year-round on the SiriusXM app. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are. 
Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. We're back on the track Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. It's the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400 from Texas Motor Speedway on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yes! Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win whichever fantasy sport you play. Right now on Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Sportsnet Radio Network. It's the fifth inning brought to you by Desjardins Insurance, helping Canadians through it all. Desjardins Insurance, insurance with a heart so big it shows. Visit Desjardins.com slash heart today. 4-0 Toronto, Cal Raleigh leads off. Switch hitter bats left, Jose Barrios' pitch. Called strike one. Mentioned last time Raleigh was up that he's a Blue Jay killer. If there was a Mount Rushmore, I'm sure Ryan Mountcastle would be at the start of it, but (laughs) Raleigh would be beside him. The 0-1, hit hard on the ground, dive at second by Biggio, picks it up, throws off his knees. Raleigh retired, one down. Didn't even give me enough time to mention his seven home runs in 12 (laughs) previous games against Toronto. There's one out on a phenomenal play by Kevin Biggio. I'm Ben Schulman. To my left, Chris LaRue, Ty France, the former Padre, and now veteran Mariner. Batting with one out and the base is empty. Here's the pitch. Called strike one. And after that play from Calvin Biggio, you can see just how excited Jose Barrios is, slamming his that, that bare hand into his glove. Pumped up. The 0-1. Check swing, called strike. Big point to the right by C.B. Buckner. It's nothing in two. Barrios looks beyond third, directs his attention home, fires, and it's a line drive to left center field. That will split Schneider and Kiermeyer. Kiermeyer cuts it off. France trying for second, and Kiermeyer lobs it back into the infield to make sure it's just a single. Fans with their approval. Also a big clap overhead from Isaiah Kiner falefa Kevin Kiermeyer takes 90 feet away from Ty France. Yeah, that's one of those things that kind of goes unnoticed. Kevin Kiermeyer cutting that ball off and making a really difficult throw kind of off balance, but the crowd actually acknowledging that. That shows you how savvy this Toronto crowd is. Kiermeyer will return to essentially straightaway center field, just a little bit off to the right field side with the left-handed hitter Dominic Canzona first pitch outside 1-0 let's take a quick peek at the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard battle in the Lone Star State Texas Rangers hosting the Houston Astros the 1-0 line drive right center field that's down for a base hit Kiermaier charging in France trying to go first to third here's the throw from Kiermaier nailed him to second, not in time. Canzone with a savvy play to take 90 feet. But Kevin Kiermeyer with an outfield assist. Ty France is waiting on third. He wants a review of that play. The Mariners taking a look at it right now. I don't even know why Ty France tried to take that bag. It was just a, a shallow kind of low line drive and Kevin Kiermeyer comes up with it quickly. I think when Kevin Kiermeyer got it, he was Ty France was barely around second base. Mariners are going to challenge, though. The ball was there in time for sure. Did France get under the tag? Kiner Falefa was straddling the base. And the tag, I don't think, was applied in time. Yeah, he's safe. They're going to reverse this. But that ball was definitely there It was a in high time. Tag. Yeah, that's a tough play for the Blue Jays and Isaiah Kiner Falefa. Clearly safe. Call 
on the field is out, but you can hear the groan yeah. of the fans as they just saw the tag from Kiner Falefa almost hit the front, kind of the shin of that front leg sliding in the left leg of France. They had him, but it just missed and got him more at the top of the thigh. By that time, France's foot was already in there. And you can see the reaction of Kevin Kiermeyer standing in second base. He was kind of crouched down with his head tilted. He knows that he does not get an outfield assist on that play. <laughs> it was a great throw by Kiermeyer. Wow. That is too bad. That was an incredible throw. Just a line drive all the way to third base on a on a line. The call is overturned. The runner is safe. Seattle retains its talent. It's a good challenge by Seattle. It's a single for Canzone, advancing to second on the throw. It's second and third with one out. Now Jose Barrios really working in his first trouble of the day. Four nothing Blue Jays, second and third, one down. Nine hitter Josh Rojas is up. Charged the ball to right center last time he was at the plate, and Kiermeyer raced to the track to reel it in. We'll go back to that St. Louis Barn Grill out of town scoreboard and give you that Houston and Texas update in just a moment. First, the left handed hitter at the plate. The pitch to Rojas. High and outside, ball one. A wild one in Texas. 5-4 in the top of the second. Texas leads over Houston. It's Houston batting right now in the top of the second. 1-0. Rojas takes a strike. Houston got on the board with Alex Bregman singling in a run and Jeremy Pena hitting an RBI ground out to go up 2-0 in the first. 1-1. Swing and a miss. 1-2. But then Texas posted a five-run bottom of the first. Jordan Alvarez helped Houston cut that deficit down to one. His home run, part of a two-run second. Our out-of-town scores brought to you by St. Louis Bar and Grill. At Rogers Center, 4-0 Blue Jays. Top of the fifth, second and third, one out, and the one-two. Foul tipped into the glove, strike three. Back foot slurve, and a good job by Kirk to hold on to it. Fourth K of the day for Barrios. Yeah, good job from Jose Barrios. That slurve couldn't have come at a better time. So tight, so sharp right now. Back foot. Rojas swings right over it. That will let the infields go back a little bit. Still two on. It's the top of the order and J.P. Crawford. Right on left pitch. In there, strike one. Weird start to the year for Crawford after a career year last year. When he had an 818 on base plus slugging, hitting the 260s. This year, he's five for his first 41. The 0 1. Fouled off. That'll make it nothing in two. It's a 122 average for JP Crawford. Started in Philadelphia. Now with Seattle. Second and third. Barrios trying to strand them. Two strikes and two outs. Here's the pitch. High. Ball one. Yeah, they were trying to come up and in on, with that fastball up at the hands. And Barrios kind of let go of it early and left it arm side high. I wouldn't mind seeing them try that again. Crawford's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out. 1-2 pitch. They did try it again, and Crawford wisely laid off it again. That pitch a little bit lower, but still definitely out of the zone. Yeah, he missed his spot just a little bit. They're trying to come at his hands, and it kind of sunk back over the middle of the plate, but about two inches out of the zone. Barrios trying to preserve the 4-0 lead. Rocks back and fires. Missed low with the slurve. Alejandro Kirk, though, nodding his head. They hit the spot. They just can't get J.P. Crawford to chase right now. Yeah, I agree. Those are all good pitches, effective pitches, but J.P. Crawford just, just not biting. He's got a good eye. Left-handed hitting shortstop. Led the American League in walks last year with 94. 3-2 pitch. Bouncer to short. Bichette charging in. Loves it on the forehand side. Throw to first in time. And the two runners in scoring position are stranded. Two hits, but no runs for the Mariners. Halfway through this game, 4-0 Toronto. 
during the home opener. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at Sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Massive news in the world of college basketball. John Calipari is leaving Kentucky. When the sports world is talking, nobody gives you more perspectives than the experts of Sirius XM. That is absolutely wild to me. Yeah, I was shocked. Hear instant reaction on college sports radio. This is about resources, and that's what the game is about now. And expert analysis on SEC radio. I don't know who doesn't win in this situation. Live sports talk when you need it on Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app three golf icons from spain this is john rom the 2023 masters champion this is sergio garcia the 2017 masters champion this is jose maria olazabal two-time masters champion pay homage to their idol sevi ballesteros if it was ever a golfer that's an artist sevi was it listen to sevi and me anytime on the sirius xm app and browse the entire catalog of golf originals search pga tour radio specials on the sirius xm app Hello, Blue Jay fans. I'm Craig Ballard, host of your daily Locked On Blue Jays podcast. Locked On Blue Jays is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On Blue Jays brings you the latest Blue Jays news and analysis and breaks down all of the action. Locked On Blue Jays is everything a Blue Jays fan could want all in a 30-minute daily podcast. Download Locked On Blue Jays right now on the SXM app, available with all trials and popular plans, or wherever you get your podcasts. Search Locked on Blue Jays. 24-7, 365. Coverage of all things NASCAR. All things NASCAR happens exclusively on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio, Channel 90. Radio Network. Welcome back to the Timbermark Broadcast booth. Bottom of the fifth inning starts with Justin Turner for the Blue Jays. 4-0 Toronto in the home opener. Luis Castillo's offering is low ball one. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. Turner today, one for one, a double, a run scored, and a walk. The right-handed hitter leans back slightly. The 1-0. Called strike. And that's kind of just what he's what he's been all season. He's put together so many good at-bats, and now he's hitting 310. He's on base plus slugging of 1,019, also leads to the team. 1-1. Hard hit ball down the right field line. Hanniger with a beat on it. Makes the catch running into the corner. One out. Let's take a look at the injury report brought to you by Bergman is Pereira Personal Injury Lawyers. If life has thrown you a curveball and you're striking out with your insurance company, get ahead of the count and call Bergman is Pereira Personal Injury Lawyers. You focus on getting better and Bergman is Pereira will take care of the rest. Visit bplawyers.ca. A lot discussed today with many of the players on the injured list here in Toronto. First, though, the pitch to Davis Schneider with one out is outside, ball one. Jordan Romano, Eric Swanson, Danny Jansen, Alec Manoa, all in the building today. John Schneider touched on all of them pregame, 1-0. Fouled off, 1-1. One and one. Right now, by the way, 4-0 Blue Jays. Bottom of the fifth, base is empty, one out. Jordan Romano threw live batting practice yesterday, so faced hitters. And they said it was good. They're determining his next steps right now. The 1-1. Swing and a miss. They had previously mentioned a couple days ago, they being John Schneider, that if it goes well, there's a potential that it's right into a rehab game after this for Romano. Eric Swanson had a rehab game yesterday. 1-2 to Schneider. Fouled off. And they said he's feeling good today. Threw 11 pitches. Clean inning. Struck out two. They like the way that Swanson's bounced back so far, so we'll see what that means for him. Danny Jansen took BP on the field today. Sorry, you wanted to comment on Swanson? No, I was going to say he looks good with his new mullet. He does. <laughs> One, two. Down and away. Check swing. Appeal to first. No swing. Two balls, two strikes. That's the first time I've seen him since spring training, and he got a new do. And he's got a stash, too, right? Stash, mullet. He's a different guy. I didn't even recognize him. Two, two. Called strike three. Schneider knew it. He's down for the second out. Danny Jansen took batting practice on the field today and has been hitting off a machine. So encouraging signs there. Hitting off high velocity is something they want Jansen to do before he gets into any games. Alec Manoa, John Schneider said, most importantly from yesterday, feels good after the start. Bouncing back well. Here's the pitch to Kevin Biggio. Two down, bases empty called strike one now with all these guys here the question was asked 
where they brought up from Florida because now a lot of them will be going to Buffalo at this point and not going back south. He said probably a lot of them, but wouldn't commit to anyone in specific. 0-1 is ripped to right field. Down in the corner, fair ball. Biggio around first. This one has extra bases written all over it. A's in a second with a stand-up double with two outs. Kevin Biggio's having himself a game. He made that great play earlier in the in the in the game. And now he rips that double down the line. Kevin Biggio is a guy that I want to see in this lineup more and more. And there might not be a spot for that. But I love the way he plays. Tenth game for Biggio already out of the 11. Not all starts. He's on second. Kirk at the plate. Swings and misses. Strike one. Last little pieces of injury news because this one's a big one. Joey Votto is hitting off a tee now. The first swings he's taken since injuring his ankle. Runner on second. Two down. Four nothing Blue Jays bottom. Five. The 0-1. Kirk leans back. It's high. Ball one. And zero timeline for Joey Votto. At this point, they didn't commit to anything. John Schneider was asked, are you surprised it took this long? Votto had stepped on a bat, and that's what ended up hurting the ankle. The 1-1. Popped up, foul, out of play, right side, one and two. Well, I remember when he first did it, he kind of made it seem like it wasn't really that big of a deal. It's been almost a month. Yeah, yeah three weeks, two yeah. months, something like that. But Schneider said, and I'm paraphrasing a bit, he said, you know, when a guy's 40, you just don't know sometimes. <laughs> Those are his words, not mine. He said, Votto wants to make sure he's 100%. One, two to Kirk. Chopper to the left side, deep in the hole, speared by the third baseman Rojas, spins, throws to first in time to retire Kirk. Two out double by Biggio is stranded, still 4-0 Blue Jays through five. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. At Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. The Blue Jays are inviting you to work from Dome. Put it in your calendar. 307 Weekday starts this season. You can work from Dome with friends or coworkers at Rogers Center. It's a game changer. Make the ballpark your office for the afternoon. Work from Dome, 307 weekday starts. Let's touch base. Check out ticket options on bluejays.com slash work from dome. I am by your side. Got a heart so big. On this you can rely. No mountains too tall for the strong boots to climb. I am by your side. That was Desjardins Insurance, playing insurance with a heart so big it shows. Tune in for your auto and home coverage at Desjardins.com slash heart. Hey, this is Tim Mazza. You're listening to Toronto Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. The sixth inning is brought to you by Desjardins Insurance, helping Canadians through it all. Desjardins Insurance, insurance with a heart so big it shows. Visit Desjardins.com slash heart today. 4-0 Blue Jays, Jose Barrios cruising along. Ran into a little bit of trouble in the fifth, but he has dominated so far. It's his third time through facing Julio Rodriguez, the number two hitter in the Seattle order. The pitch. One hopper to short. Bichette shuffles to his left. Fields throws to first. Got him. Well, let's go to the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard. Chris, the national championship is tonight. March Madness. You know, my bracket way gone. Did you make a bracket? I did not make a bracket. But I was more interested in the in the women's final than the men's final. Fair. I have to admit. First pitch strike to Jorge Polanco, 0-1. One out, top of the sixth, 4-0 Blue Jays over Seattle. Well, it is a great final on the men's side. 
Two one seeds meet in the final in Purdue and UConn. Next pitch is grounded softly up the middle. Backhanded by Biggio. Throwing, falling away. Nailed him. Another nice play by Kevin Biggio up the middle. There are two down. Yet another solid play by my guy, Kevin Biggio. Well, despite you being... <laughs> I'm going to go back to March Madness for a second because there are two outs and I want to get there. Despite less interest maybe in the men's side, I'm going to ask you, who do you think is going to win, Purdue or UConn? Well, I want Purdue to win just because they have Edie and he's from Toronto. All right. Well, that's that's the only, but that's the only reason. That's who I'm picking as well. Shocker. Nine twenty is when that game tips off. First pitch to Mitch Hanniger, called strike one. Two outs in the bases empty. Top of the sixth inning. Do you think they're going to win, or you just want them to win? I don't know. <laughs> I got no. Clue. You're the college basketball guy. Yeah, I'm a little out of out of the game though. The 0-1 fouled off. Nothing in two. I'll be honest. I wasn't sure that they were going to get there. As as talented as Edie is, and Purdue is as a team, because there are guys outside of him who are good. I wondered if someone would find a way to keep them away from the basket, slow them down, but they haven't. So I, you know what, I'll say I think they're going to win. Next pitch in the dirt, one ball and two strikes. But you prefaced it with you have no idea. So. I got no clue. Really. <laughs> I, got no, I picked North Carolina. To win the whole thing, so what do I know? Barrios with a deep breath, kicks and delivers. Breaking ball, down and away. Two balls, two strikes. The line favors UConn quite heavily, I will say. Some places you could see it at seven and a half points being given to the Huskies. They don't need to win. They always win. The 2-2. Two -two. Fouled off. Two balls, two strikes still. Purdue hasn't won since 1980. Yeah, and I'll be honest, like, as a Syracuse fan, they don't play in UConn's conference anymore as a Syracuse alum. I don't want UConn to win. There are a lot of people from Connecticut who go to Syracuse, and with no offense to George Springer, I find them annoying when they talk about <laughs> the UConn Huskies and all their titles. 2-2 two -two pitch. Ripped foul to the right side. Missed a double by about a foot. Mitch Hanniger with some good swings, but still at the plate with a 2-2 two -two count. Well, I went to the Winthrop University, oh, yeah. powerhouse in the Big South. They Conference. are the powerhouse of the Big South. They were good for a while. I think they made about eight tournaments in a row, and they had Greg Marshall as their head co as their head coach. More than my Orange can say over the last couple of years. Well, your Orange were in a little bit better of a conference. Slightly. <laughs> the 2-2. Two -two. Just missed. Three ball, two strike count. Barrios' pitch count up to 85 pitches. No action, no one even moving around in the Blue Jay bullpen. Payoff. Called strike three. Throws him on a front door slurve. Jose Barrios is dealing. He's gone six scoreless. Bottom of the sixth coming up, 4 nothing Blue Jays. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. in a community of hard rock extremists. Oh, no! World premieres, live performances, and artist takeovers. A giant thank you to the entire Octane community for keeping rock alive. Turn up new hard rock. Turn up Octane. Nine. Channel 37 and on the Sirius XM app. Are you regretting eating that gas station hot dog? Yeah, we know. We've been there too. This is a message for baseball fans like you. Did you know that you get a channel that's talking baseball 24-7 as part of your Sirius XM subscription? What? Our lineup includes shows hosted by former big leaguers and executives. Plus, you'll hear from 17 managers each week. MLB Network Radio is on Sirius XM Channel 89. Or just search MLB Network Radio on the SXM app. Sirius XM Sports. We're more than just a game. The Busted Open Podcast is now available on YouTube. This is Dave LaGreca, host of Busted 
Busted Open, the number one pro wrestling show on the planet. You can now watch and listen to the award-winning Busted Open podcast every single day on YouTube. Our best interviews, behind-the-scenes access, and some of our best content from the past. All available right now when you go to YouTube.com slash at Busted Open Podcast. Subscribe right now. In season or out of season, the number one place for college sports is Sirius XM College Sports Radio, Channel 84. Sportsnet Radio Network. Bottom of the sixth inning of the home opener, Blue Jays up 4-0 on the Mariners, and Seattle will go to its bullpen for the first time today. It's Tyson Miller, the right-hander, coming in relief of Luis Castillo. Miller stands on the third base side of the rubber, faces Isaiah Kiner-Falefa. Here's his pitch. Whizzed in there for strike one. After Jose Barrio struck out that last batter, he was walking off the field. He was screaming at Alejandro Kirk. Kirk was screaming back at him. They were pounding their gloves. You know they're on the same page. Side-armed in for strike two by Miller. Some had predicted that maybe this is the year Barrios really, really breaks out. He's been incredibly strong his whole career, very consistent. 0 2 to IKF. Fouled off. And look, it's three starts, and he could easily come back out. There is no major movement in the Blue Jay pen right now. But he's looked so good so far. 0 2 down and away one and two and not just today all three starts he's looked really good well the first three starts of the season are a lot like spring training you don't really take that much stock into them one two lined foul just beyond the first base dugout still one and two but it's better if you do well oh certainly (laughs) and he's only at 86 pitches i think he goes to 100 and then he's out of here The pitch to IKF, again hit foul to the right side. Tyson Miller, the 6'5", right-hander in, a native of Fairfield, California. Fourth round pick by the Cubs in 2016 out of California Baptist. 1-2 again. Got him. Called strike three. He gets a call on the outside edge. That pitch looked way outside. IKF down. Yeah, that's not a strike. And as IKF was walking back to the dugout, he was saying something to C.B. Buckner. Rightfully so. That ball was about a ball off the plate. So with one down, here's Kevin Kiermeyer. One for two with a single, a stolen base, and a run scored. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Blue Jays fans, cancel your afternoon plans. Afternoon games are back at Rogers Center. Head to the ballpark this Wednesday, April 10th for a 3.07 p.m. start to see the Blue Jays take on the Mariners. Visit BlueJays.com slash tickets and get your tickets today. Next pitch, hit down the left field line, slicing foul. It bounces off the seats, off the front facing of the second deck, and back into the sea of fans. 0-2. Miller, the right-hander, kicks and delivers. And again, Kiermaier will foul it off to the left. Almost the exact same spot, a little bit shallower. And a catch on the bare hand by a fan out there down the left field line. Miller's fastball is only about 92, 93, but he has a lot of cut to it. It's a tough fastball. Called up today by the Seattle Mariners. Made two changes in their bullpen. 0-2. Fouled off once more. O2 pitch again called strike three. Another one that looked to be out of the zone. Huge punch by C.B. Buckner. And Kiermaier's having a word with him now. After the Blue Jays have been set down on back-to-back controversial strike threes. Kevin Kiermaier kind of arches his back after that call. That was about a half a ball off the plate. But he arches his back. He stares at the sky. And then, of course, he has a word for C.B. Buckner as he's walking behind him. 
So two outs and the base is empty. Here's George Springer. Swing and a miss, strike one. Blue Jays have hits in four consecutive innings. That's in danger here after back-to-back -back strikeouts by the reliever Miller. The 0-1. Lifted to shallow right. Hanniger coming in. He'll relieve the second baseman. Polanco make the catch and end the inning. 1-2-3 for Miller out of the Seattle pen at the end of six. Still 4 nothing for the Blue Jays. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center. Streaming at Sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. Which Looney Dogger are you? The Fork and Knifer, Splatterer, Condiment Queen, or Big Dipper? This season at Rogers Center, every Tuesday home game is Looney Dogs Night, presented by Schneiders. You will have the opportunity to purchase $1 hot dogs from various concession stands around the stadium. Then show the world your Looney Dog style. Because whether you're the Mustard Maven or Ketchup King, no Blue Jays game is complete without hot dogs. So don't miss out on this deal. Looney Dogs Night, presented by Schneiders. Every Tuesday home game. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Pitch to Kevin Biggio is rocked to right field. That ball is gone. On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Top of the seventh, and guess who's still on the mound? It's Jose Barrios, today's starter, trying to continue to blank the Mariners. 4 0 Toronto over Seattle, home opener in 2024. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. First offering to Mitch Garver he is in there, strike one. Jose Barrios is at 87 pitches. He probably has about 13 left. If I was John Schneider, about 100 is where I'd be. The 0-1 inside. Barrios has gotten this far by throwing 62 strikes out of his 88 pitches. He has really put the pressure on the Mariners hitters. The 1-1. Swing and a miss. Ugly there from Garver on a slurve way out of the zone. 1-2. and two. And to get a guy third time through the lineup to take a swing like that, especially after he's seen you twice... I mean, ask Luis Castillo, how hard is it to, to, to face guys third time through the lineup? Swinging like that, his stuff is good tonight. 1-2 is looped to center. Kiermaier sprints toward left center. Schneider curls away from it as Kiermaier makes the catch. One out. On the St. Louis Bar and Grill out of town scoreboard, the Maple Leafs in action tonight, hosting the Pittsburgh Penguins. Cal Raleigh to the plate, one out, 4 nothing Blue Jays, top of the seventh, nobody on the pitch. High ball one. Maple Leafs up 2-1 thanks to a goal to start the third period by Chris. Austin Matthews. There you go, 65th <laughs> of the season for Austin Matthews, a power play goal. <laughs> You can catch that game on Sportsnet 1. The 1-0. Inside, 2-0. I was going to make a joke and just say Max Domi, but... Hey, I mean... I went with the obvious. It happens sometimes. <laughs> Other goal for the Leafs today. Matthew Nyes scored in the second period after Ricard Raquel started the scoring for Pittsburgh. 2-0 to Raleigh. Swing and a miss. 2-1. Our out-of-town scores brought to you by St. Louis Bar and Grill. That one in town, though. The Leafs playing 
you know, just a couple blocks away at Scotiabank Arena. It's good for traffic. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Very fun getting out of here. 2 1. Popped up, out of play, behind the plate, off to the left, 2 and 2. Raleigh 0 for 2 today. A strikeout and, and then robbed of a hit by Kevin Biggio on a diving stop back in the fifth inning. They shift him to that pull side. Big switch hitter batting left. 30 homers last year. The 2-2. Two -two. Fouled off. Raleigh without an extra base hit to start the year. Five for his first 27. Before Jose Barrios threw that pitch, Alejandro Kirk was pointing at the ground. And Jose Barrios threw it exactly where he was pointing. Guy's almost at 100 pitches, and he's just dotting every pitch he throws. He's just sharp. He's been sharp through his three starts. Here's his 96th pitch of the day. Popped up, heading toward us. We're in some trouble, and that one hits the front <laughs> facing just above us. Laptop was closed. I went back. I was not trying to make a play on that ball. There are four people in this booth, and all four of us moved, jumped out of the way. And <laughs> you have to be the one most responsible. I had my legs like up. This. <laughs> two, two again. Called strike three. Or no. Big noise. No call from Buckner. Full count. That was the loudest ball call I've ever heard in my that life. Was, that was wild. <laughs> Here's the 3 2. Check swing, appeal to 30. One around. There's the strikeout. Adam Beck rings up Cal Raleigh. Sixth strikeout of the day. There's that really tight back foot slider that Jose Barrios has thrown so often to lefties. And then he points at Alejandro Kirk. They've been on the same page all day long. Well, all year long, really. Six Ks for Barrios, one walk, three hits allowed through six and two-thirds. Jimmy Garcia warming. Here's the pitch to Ty France. Called strike one. Really the only Mariner who solved Jose Barrios in a big way today. France is two for two with a pair of singles. The 0-1. Taken for called strike two by the right-handed hitter. Fans making noise. This could be the last pitch of the outing for Barrios. His 101st. Broken bat looper over the head of Guerrero and into right field for a base hit. Half the barrel is laying on the third base side of the mound. He completely got France there, but that's baseball. Ty France is three for three. Yeah, I don't know if John Schneider is going to let him. Oh, no, here he comes. <laughs> Fans don't love it. But with Barrios at 101 pitches, that will be it for his day. After the course of booze, likely an applause to come for what was just a phenomenal day for the home opener starter, Barrios. Schneider hasn't pointed to the pen. Barrios is nodding his head, talking to him right now. And there the point is made. Barrios will come out of the game to a raucous standing ovation Six and two-thirds for Jose Barrios. Screams into his glove. He's fired up. And he'll head back to the dugout now as Jimmy Garcia takes over. Let's go to baseball control. Here's our host today, Show Ali. Thank you very much, guys. And before we check out that St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard, don't forget, we do have Jay's talk tonight. Blair and Barker have Jay's talk. The guys will take your phone calls after the final out. They were, are down at the Rogers Center. Blair will throw out those numbers to call once this game is officially in the books. Just down the street from the Dome, the Leafs taking on the Penguins right now after a pretty rough start to the season. Pittsburgh entering play tonight just one point back of the final Eastern Conference wildcard spot. This game now tied at two. It's six minutes to go in the third period. Austin Matthews with goal number 65 of this season tonight. Matthew Nye scoring as well. His third goal in the last four games. You can watch that game on Sportsnet 1. Only uh, one other game on the Goats tonight in uh, in the NHL. The Canucks will take on the Golden Knights in Vancouver at Rogers Arena. Canucks already postseason bound. 
Golden Knights trying to hold on to their final wildcard spot in the West. They are five points up with six to play. That game gets going on Sportsnet Pacific and Sportsnet at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. You can also listen to it on Sportsnet 650 in Vancouver and tune in for Canuck Central postgame after the final buzzer. In Major League Baseball, Astros now on top 7-5. to five. Kyle Tucker with a two-RBI single to give Houston the lead. The larger story here, Framber Valdez, he was scratched from his start tonight with elbow soreness in his pitching arm. MLB.com's Brian McTaggart saying the team is optimistic amidst a rash of pitcher injuries across baseball. Blue Jays baseball is brought to you by Crown Rust Protection. Let's get you back to the action on the other side of the downtown core. Here's Ben Shulman and Chris LaRue down at the Rogers Center. Thank you very much, show. Jimmy Garcia on the mound for the Blue Jays, the right-hander about to make his fourth appearance of the year. He comes in for Jose Barrios, and before we get to Garcia, who will deal with a runner on first two outs in a 4 nothing game in favor of Toronto top seven, Barrios going six and two-thirds, four hits, one walk, six strikeouts, and the maximum he can give up is one run. He is responsible for Ty France on first. He was marvelous today. Garcia about to deal to left-handed hitting Dominic Canzone. First pitch, ripped foul, 0-1. And that last pitch that he threw was a slider that was supposed to be down. Alejandro Kirk was pointing at the ground just like he has done so many times this this season and tonight. Jose Brios hit his spot, shattered Ty France's bat, and gave up that blue pit to right field. Oh, one hit over the screen to the left side into the seats. Nothing in two. So even on his last pitch that he gave up a hit on, he made a quality pitch. What can you do? Blue Jays playing it extra safe here, going to the pen despite the magnificent start for Barrios. Garcia's 0-2 to Canzone. Smoked foul again. I mean, all three foul balls, but Canzone has been on Garcia's arsenal so far, which features five different pitches. He's got to throw an elevated fastball here. Garcia can go high 90s with it. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. 97 up in the zone. He strikes out Canzone and strands the runner. Seventh inning stretch. First OK Blue Jays of the season. And Toronto is up 4-0 while they sing it. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball. Brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center. Streaming at Sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. Some men with lots of trucks. So give us a call today. I am by your side. Got a heart so big. On this you can rely. No mountains too tall for the strong boots to climb. I am by your side. That was Desjardins Insurance, playing insurance with a heart so big it shows. Tune in for your auto and home coverage at Desjardins.com slash heart. Hey, this is Dalton Varsho. You're listening to Toronto Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Tyson Miller deals the first pitch of the bottom of the seventh, and Guerrero lines about a left, sprinting in. A catch made by Dominic Canzone. One out. Appreciate you hanging around with us. Monday night home opener for the Blue Jays. Game 11 of Toronto's season. They're up 4 nothing over Seattle. Welcome back to the Timbermark Broadcast booth, by the way. I'm Ben Schulman, and to my left is Chris LaRue. Show Ali, our host and producer today, Austin Mackey and Tom Young, our technical directors. One out. Here's Bo Bichette. One for three with a double and a run score. 
Miller, the tall righty, kicks and releases. Bichette takes outside, 1-0. and Miller came in last inning, capped off Luis Castillo's day. Another tough one for the right-handed ace for the Mariners. Five innings, nine hits, four runs, one walk, six Ks. The 1-0. Bichette checks his swing, called strike at the top of the zone. One and one. Production all throughout the lineup for the Blue Jays today. The 1-1. Fouled off 1-2. and two. Luis Castillo has been incredibly consistent all season long. Tonight, five innings, four runs, nine hits. April 2nd, five and two-thirds, four runs, ten hits. March 28th, five innings, four runs, six hits. Second time through is what burned him again. Three runs scored by guys who were on base after getting hit second time through. The one-two. Bichette with a liner. Dive at short. Beautiful catch. J.P. Crawford. One-time gold glover. Steals one from Bichette. Two outs. And Bichette got that just off the end of the, of the bat. Didn't hit it quite hard enough to get it by J.P. Crawford at shortstop. Still had to make a quick reaction, though, and did well. But, yeah, Bo hit that one at 87 miles per hour off the bat. So two down. Here's Justin Turner. The reliever, Tyson Miller's retired all five he's faced. Pitch outside, 1-0. and Busy schedules have finally met their match. Ticket packs. With ticket packs, you get the ultimate flexibility to mix tickets for any games with unlimited exchanges, plus save up to 20% compared to single-game tickets. Visit BlueJays.com slash ticket packs to get yours today. Turner hits a ball in the air to right. A little bit of a lazy fly ball caught near the line by the right fielder, Mitch Hanniger, to end the inning. Blue Jays go down 1-2-3, but as we head to the eighth, lead 4-0 in the home opener. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball, brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center, streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. They are among the greatest to ever play their sports. Caitlin Clark is the all-time scoring leader. They are legends and icons. Larry Bird hit the chop with no second thought. I don't know how he did it. And you can hear them right now on the all-new Sirius XM app. We are here with Iowa superstar Caitlin Clark. Clark. I'm so focused on winning. It's never anything I ever take for granted. Here comes Larry Burke, the Hall of Famer, and he just won Legend of the Year. Legend of the Year, isn't that something? For access to the game's greats, we lie on the leader in sports audio, Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. This is CJ Nikowski. Join me, Ryan Spielborgs, and Brad Lidge every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern as we give you the player's perspective of what's happening in baseball. He is possessed every time he goes out there right now. This is crazy. There's this energy that certain players bring. It's Loud Outs every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern on MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 89, and the all-new Sirius XM app. The Masters is on Sirius XM. Has pace, working up to the hole, needs the turn. It turned all right. It turned right into the cup for John Rahm. That's a birdie. Hi, this is Mike Tirico. Hear every incredible shot in all the dramatic moments as the best golfers in the world vie for the coveted green jacket. Everyone at Amen Corner stands and appreciates the great Tiger Woods. Hear the Masters exclusively on Sirius XM, on Masters Radio Channel 92 in the car, and on the all-new Sirius XM app. The Blue Jays are in flight, leading 3 nothing. Blue Jays fans, this is Ross Atkins, and you're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on Sirius XM. Radio Network. Top of the eighth inning at Rogers Center. 4 nothing. Blue Jays, second inning of work for Jimmy Garcia. He offers to Josh Rojas. Left-handed hitter swings and misses 0-1. I'm Ben Schulman. To my left is Chris LaRue. Rojas is 0 for 2 today, a flyout and a strikeout. He's the 9 hitter, the 0 1. Called high. One ball, one strike. The third baseman grips a two tone bat, light handle, dark barrel. 1 1. Outside, 2 0. Acquired by Seattle in a trade with Arizona last deadline. Same with the guy who hit in front of him, Dominic Canzone. The 2-1. 
Fastball in there at 97, right at the knees, 2-2. Two and, two. and that's about as good as it gets. 97 with good action, down in the zone. That is impossible to hit. Garcia from the stretch. Kicks, fires, and it's a fly ball sent to shallow center. Kiermaier sprinting in, still sprinting, and Bo Bichette goes out to make the play. Nobody made the call. Bichette was running back, twisting. He made the catch. One down. And they're laughing now, but that's one of those scary plays where the center fielder is converging on the shortstop, and Bo is kind of tentative. He was unsure if Kevin Kiermaier was going to run into him, but luckily Kiermaier looked up and saw Bo trying to call for that ball. That's a pretty scary play there. First pitch to J.P. Crawford inside ball one. Bichette actually braced for impact, kind of curled up after he made the catch. One zero to Crawford. Called strike one and one. As frustrating at times as the Blue Jays' offense has been to start the year, Seattle in a similar situation, being shut out right now in the eighth. One one, smoke to right field, way back. Springer jogging on the track. That ball's way out of here. Huge home run for Crawford. Being shut out no more. It's 4-1 for the Blue Jays over the Mariners. And lefties love that pitch. Down and in, not quite down enough. Garcia throws that slider in the zone, and it kind of spins on the inside part of the plate. And J.P. Crawford just drops the barrel and drills it into right field. Second home run of the season for J.P. Crawford. Eighth for the Mariners as a team. And it's 4-1. Julio Rodriguez to the plate. Still waiting on his first homer of the year. With one out and the base is empty, the pitch. Called strike one. Mariners breaking out the Tridents, their home run celebration. 0-1. Fly ball to left. Schneider's going back. So is Kiermaier. Puts his right hand out as he settles onto the track. Makes the catch. It's a long second out. Exciting news for young Blue Jays fans introducing the 2024 Junior Jays Club All-Star Membership. Get ready for a connection to the Toronto Blue Jays with exclusive experiences you won't find anywhere else. Join the excitement at BlueJays.com slash JR Jays Club. Jorge Polanco to hit. Switch hitter who's batted left all day. 0 for 2 with a walk. Garcia's first offering. Check swing, appeal to third, no swing, says Adam Beck, so that high fastball will go down at, as ball one. It is scary when Julio Rodriguez puts a drive into a baseball like that. Long fly ball, almost as long as it can get in this ballpark. The 1-0. Foul tipped, back off the glove of Kirk, strike one. But he just, he's really gotten out of the gate slow. And J.P. Crawford kind of hurt my point a little bit. But the Blue Jays <laughs> and the Mariners have both gotten off to tough starts. Blue Jays batting 193 coming into today. Second worst in the AL. Next pitch. Swing and a miss. And it's one and two. But we've seen signs of life the last couple of games for this Blue Jays team. They were, they were so bad the first seven-ish games. And the last two games in the Bronx, they started to come to life. And this is what we've been we've been expecting the last two games. Two out, space is empty. Garcia shortens up his stride. Now the one-two. High ball two. On the Mariners' side, they're batting 213, which is bottom half, but not right at the bottom. But they actually had a lesser slugging percentage than the Blue Jays. While the Blue Jays haven't hit for a high average, had a handful of extra base hits. Mariners with the second worst OPS in the American League. The 2-2. Two -two is high and outside, 3-2. and two. Only the Chicago White Sox had a lesser on-base plus slugging coming into today than the Mariners. They have homered this inning, though, to get on the board. 4-1 score, 3-2 pitch, outside, ball four. Second walk of the day for Polanco, and now Mitch Hanniger to hit. And this is where Jimmy Garcia just has to start pounding the zone. You have a three-run lead. You can't just you can't just 
pick around the zone and try to strike guys out. You have to just pound the zone, throw strike one, and let your defense do its work. Pete Walker and Alejandro Kirk are going to go out right now to talk to Jimmy Garcia. It is a potentially dangerous power hitter in the game right now for Seattle. Mitch Hanniger, who in 2018 was an all-star after a 26-homer season, after departures of some mainstays from the Mariners like Nelson Cruz, he really took the lead in 2021, hit 39 homers, knocked in 100 runs. Injuries have slowed him down a little bit, but he's, he's quite the hitter. Jimmy Garcia just threw a sinker at 99 miles an hour. If you throw that pitch down in the zone, what's going to happen? Well, if I throw that pitch, we got to call the papers. <laughs> John Green getting loose for the, Bull J- for the Blue Jays. Runner on first, two outs, 4-1 Toronto, top of the eighth. C.B. Buckner steps out from the right side of home plate. I believe that Hanniger had called time to avoid a pitch clock violation. First right on right pitch. Breaking ball in there for strike one. Throw over to first. Polanco dives back. Guerrero is playing probably a step and a half off first. Don't think they're anticipating much that Polanco's going to try and swipe a back here. I mean, it would eliminate a force, but the tying run in this game is on deck right now, not the guy on the base pass. A one. Low, one ball, one strike. Yeah, I would imagine that Jorge Polanco is going to be safe here and not try to steal second base. But you never know. Polanco only stole four bases last year. Was not thrown out. The 1-1. Bounce. Good backhand pick by Kirk. Keeps Polanco at first base. 2-1. There haven't been a ton of tense moments, but a little bit more of a murmur right now amongst the crowd. Home run this inning by J.P. Crawford. And now with two outs, a runner on first. 4-1 Toronto. Top of the eighth. The 2-1 to Hanniger. Swing and a miss. 96 at the knees. Two and two. There you go. 96 mile an hour sinker down in the zone. What happened? Swung right through it. That's all Jimmy Garcia needs to do. He's peeking over his left shoulder. Kicks and delivers. Threw the fastball again. It was fouled back. There is a huge hole on the right side of this infield between Vlad and Kevin Biggio. Kevin Biggio playing almost directly behind second base. Hanniger's 0 for 3. Ground ball to third. Fly ball to right. Strikeout looking. All against Barrios. The 2-2. Ground ball hit to third. Just gets foul. And that's a break for the Blue Jays. Isaiah kiner falefa fielded it, but he was like in the third base coach's box at that point. Falling away, it would have been a really tough play, even for a guy who's won a gold glove over there. Well, IKF actually made the throw. He was unsure if that ball was, be, was being called fair or foul. He made the throw. It's a good throw. One hopper to Vlad at first base. IKF playing deep at third. The 2-2 again. Breaking ball. Frozen strike three. Garcia gives up the solo home run, but holds down the fort. It's 4-1 Toronto. And they will try to add some insurance on in the bottom of the eighth inning. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at Sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. He doesn't throw fastballs. He throws fuego. He has the focus and agility of a Shaolin monk. He's not just a pitcher. He's a machine. He defends the field and our city's honor. He is one of the best defensively out of the mid. Jose Barrios is as good as gold. Celebrate Jose's golden accomplishment with the Jose Barrios Gold Glove Bobblehead. Friday, April 12th. For tickets, visit BlueJays.com. 
At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. I am by your side. Got a heart so big. On this you can rely. No mountains too tall for the strong boost to climb. I am by your side. That was Desjardins Insurance. Playing insurance with a heart so big, it shows. Tune in for your auto and home coverage at Desjardins.com slash heart. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball. Next pitch, Moniak takes off. It's low a ball. Throw down to second. They got him. On Sportsnet 590 The Fan and the Sportsnet Radio Network. This copyrighted broadcast is presented by Authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership or the Sportsnet Radio Network. Brett DeGus in the game, right-hander out of the pen for the Mariners, bottom of the eighth inning. David Schneider wanted to start his at-bat. C.B. Buckner's talking to him right now with his mask off. 4-1 Toronto, bottom of the eighth. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. To Gus's first pitch, called strike one. First appearance for the right-hander at the major league level since 2021 when he made 47 in between Texas and Arizona. David Schneider today is one for three, a single and two driven in. Second pitch is a strike once again, nothing and two. Two strong innings out of the pen for Seattle's Tyson Miller. To Gus to follow his 0-2. Down and away. Speaking of Texas, one of the teams that DeGus pitched for in 21. Wild game continues between the Astros and the Rangers. The 1-2. Line drive, right field, base hit. David Schneider didn't have a single coming into today. He's got two. He stops at first base. Yeah, he hit that ball right on the nose. That was a curveball down in the zone. David Schneider so good at hitting that low pitch. Just like we saw against Josh Hader in Houston. He stays right on that pitch and lines a good, hard single to right field. Speaking of hitting, on the St. Louis Bar and Grill out-of-town scoreboard, the Houston Astros, who trailed 5-2 to two at one point, have scored eight straight. And, Chris, stop me if you've heard this before. Jordan Alvarez has three hits, a double, a homer, and three RBIs. I think that slow start to the year has faded a little bit. <laughs> pinch runner Dalton Varsho in for Schneider. Kevin Biggio at the plate. First pitch called strike one. They'll add some speed on the base paths and a likely defensive substitution coming up anyway with a three-run lead as Varsho comes in for Schneider. Our out-of-town scores brought to you again by St. Louis Bar and Grill. Pitch in the dirt to Kevin Biggio. It's one and one. I need to know the exit velos on those Jordan Alvarez hits before that, I make my assessment. Okay, that I can find. <laughs> Runner on first, nobody out. Throw over to first. A balk. A balk. Brock Ballou, the first base umpire, stepped immediately over the foul line, pointed at DeGus with his right hand. I don't think he ever fully came set. He was kind of halfway to doing it. Or no, he flinched. He flinched with both of his legs. He definitely came set, set pardon me. But he flinched with both of his legs. Looked like he was making a move to the plate. So he boxed Varsho over to second with nobody out. Yeah, that was a very obvious balk. He kind of, you're right, he just flinched. The 1-1. One, one. Fouled off 1-2. and two. He still tried to throw it, though. He flinched and then came set and then tried to throw it, tried to hide it. But that, the call was already made. You could understand some nerves from a guy who hasn't pitched since the 2021 regular season being called up and put into a game today. 4-1 Blue Jays. The 1-2. Down and in. Sliding block by Raleigh. That hit. Kevin Biggio. Struck him in the back foot, it looked like. 
So Biggio will head down to first. His second time aboard today after a double in the fifth. First and second for the Blue Jays with nobody out. And wouldn't they love to add some runs and save Chad Green, who's been warming up in left field? Yeah, these are two very important runs out there. Two very important insurance runs. Kevin Biggio is so good at just being, just getting on base any way possible. He's, he's, it seems like he just gets hit a lot. It happens to some guys. I mean, Ty <laughs> France, the first baseman he's talking with right now, has led Major League Baseball in hit by pitch twice in the last three years. He also didn't really try to get out of the way of that pitch. Don't almost need just, to. Almost just let him hit it. Don't need to. First and second, nobody out. Alejandro Kirk up the pitch. Called strike one. Kirk won for three today. A single in the second that opened the scoring. Drove in Justin Turner. By the way, the final out-of-town scoreboard thing, that Jordan home run, 113 off the bat. Next pitch is high, ball one. We'll focus back now on the game here. First and second, big opportunity for the Blue Jays. Bottom of the eighth inning. Brett DeGus's first inning of work has not gone to plan so far. A single, a balk, and a hit batter. 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. Put the fastball by Kirk at 98. Degas, a 33rd round pick by the Dodgers in 2017. Pitching in his 48th Major League game. 1-2 hit foul. And Kirk will do it again. 98 miles an hour. I know he didn't throw 98 when he was drafted in the 33rd round, but that's a good, that's a good draft if you're the scout. He sets with his light-colored glove below the belt. Kicks, delivers. Kirk grounds the ball to second. This could be two. Picked up by Polanco. Flips to Crawford for one. Back to first. 4-6-3. Double play. Varsho will head to third on it. But the Blue Jays rally at least took a dent right there. Two outs, runner on third. Here comes Isaiah Connor falefa So a good bounce back for DeGus, the right-handed reliever. Third pitcher today for Seattle. His pitch to IKF in the dirt. Blocked by Raleigh. 1-0. And again, this is a big run standing on third base. Dalton Varsho represents that all-important fourth run. So Chad Green won't come in this ball game if the Blue Jays can get this fourth run here. 1-0 lands in 1-1. One one. Although they haven't gotten anyone else up. So maybe at this point it's too late to make a change unless the Blue Jays were to rally big with two outs. 1-1. One, one. Inside, nearly hit him. Heard the frustration there from DeGus. It's 2-1. and one. Yeah, you're right. Normally there would be somebody else just kind of loosening up next to Chad Green. I don't see anybody out there, so this might just be Chad Green's game no matter what. 2-1 is inside, 3-1. I mean, the Blue Jays, even at 4 nothing, were pitching this like it was a one-run game, bringing Jimmy Garcia in. They might just not want to mess around. They had a tough first road trip. 3-1 pitch. IKF, it's a liner to right field. Hanniger will let it drop. RBI single. Varsho jogs home. 5-1 Blue Jays. Two-hit day for IKF. Yeah, I don't see anybody else getting in getting up in that bullpen so this is chad green's game you're right the, the blue jays just don't want to mess around they had a tough road trip they need this ball game especially the first game in front of their home crowd first pitch fouled off by kevin kiermeyer it's 0-1 green hasn't pitched since friday as well so he is pretty well rested i mean look if kiermeyer homered right now maybe things change but for now the 0-1, runner takes off, pitch in the dirt, throw down a second, on a bounce, not in time. Stolen base by Isaiah Kiner-Falefa, and he becomes the first Blue Jay not named Kevin Kiermeyer to swipe a bag this year. Yeah, that's a good sign. I would love for the Blue Jays to do more of that. A guy who swiped 16 bags each of the last two seasons. That play was a lot closer at second base than I thought it was going to be. Raleigh's got a big arm, even though it bounced. 
Runner on second, the 1-1 to Kiermaier. Inside, ball two. Pardon me, IKF with 14 last year, 22 the year before in the stolen base category. Two one, called strike. Kiermeyer's one for three, a single to right field in the fourth. Two two, down and in. Kiermeyer backs out of the way of it after starting his swing. Full count. Chad Green isn't really warming up anymore, just standing there waiting. With two outs, the payoff. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Kiermaier goes down to end the inning, but the Blue Jays add one thanks to Isaiah Kiner-Falefa. He singles home Dalton Varsho, and it's 5-1 Toronto headed to the ninth. Chad Green looks to finish off a home opener in style when we return. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Hey, it's Taylor. It's finally here for one month. Listen now. Sirius XM Chance. Get ready for the 2024 NFL Draft on Sirius XM NFL Radio. Touchdown, Caleb Williams. Catch exclusive interviews with the top prospects as they begin their journey to the NFL. And hear pick-by-pick coverage of the 2024 Draft from Detroit. With the first pick, the Chicago Bears select. Your home for the 2024 NFL Draft is Sirius XM NFL Radio Channel 88 in the car. And on the all-new Sirius XM app. You love listening to baseball. You love talking about baseball, and so do we. That's why Sirius XM has the only channel on the radio dedicated to baseball 24-7. It's MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89. News, opinions, passionate baseball talk from former players and GMs, plus interviews with players, managers, and executives, original specials, and much, much, much more. All baseball, every day, on your radio. If you can hear me right now, you've got MLB Network Radio. Sirius XM Channel 89, and on the Sirius XM app. Hey, baseball fans, the best 24-7 hoops talk lives on NBA radio as we get you ready for the stretch run of the season only on Channel 86 and on the brand new Sirius XM app. That radio Network. Welcome back to the Timbermart Broadcast booth. Top of the ninth inning in Toronto. The Blue Jays looking for a win in their home opener 2024. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. Show Ali is our host and producer, Austin Mackey and Tom Young our technical directors. It's the righty Chad Green into the game. He has Mitch Garver, Cal Raleigh, and Ty France on his ledger. The pitch to Garver, high and inside, ball one. Green saved the last Blue Jay win in New York on Friday. 1-0. Called strike, 1-1. One and one. Righty sets, kicks, delivers, fouled off, and it's one ball and two strikes. Faint chance of let's go Blue Jays. It's nice to see a lot of people still here this late on a Monday night. Past 10 p.m. Eastern in Toronto. But the first time in five months that Blue Jays fans have been able to see their team on the field, and they've looked good today, leading 5-1. First batter of the ninth is Mitch Garver. The one-two. Swing and a miss. Chase the breaking ball. One down. And that ball was nowhere near the zone. Obviously expecting a fastball up in the zone or something other than that curveball, but that was a nice, tight curveball from Chad Green. Here's Cal Raleigh 0 for 3. Two strikeouts. Switch hitter bats from the left. The pitch. Fouled back into the netting. 0-1. Really the first full season for Green. Only got back with the Blue Jays late last year. Coming off Tommy John. The 0-1. Bounced. One ball and one strike. 
gave up the home run in his first start, but has been pretty spotless ever since. And that was a game he came into with the Blue Jays up 8-1. to 1-1 one. One, one pitch. Hit high and deep to right. Springer going back. And that will be another home run given up as Cal Raleigh dunks it into the seats in right field. 4-2. to two. Yeah, that was just a slider that Chad Green left middle, middle, right over the heart of the plate. And Cal Raleigh doesn't miss it. He definitely loves this ballpark. Eighth home run in 13 games against the Blue Jays for Cal Raleigh. The most he's hit against any team he's faced. And reminder, these are not divisional foes. He's played <laughs> the, teams, the teams in his division 30-odd times. The pitch to Ty France called strike one. And that's why that insurance run is so important. Now Chad Green just goes back to work. I'm going to stop saying guys haven't had hits in certain situations. <laughs> 0-1. Fastball called strike two. You did say earlier in the ball game that Cal, Ra Cal Raleigh does love <laughs> oh, hitting okay. against the Toronto I Blue Jays. You that I said that, that the Mariners were being shut out and oh, well, J.P. Crawford yeah, parked one and right. 0-2 <laughs> pitch down and away. One ball and two strikes. So a 5-2 game. Base is empty. One out top of the ninth inning. The pitch to France. Hit foul to right field, slicing into the second down. France hasn't been retired yet today. Three for three, a single to left, a single to center, a single to right. Notably ended Barrios' start. One, two, down and away, two balls, two strikes. Just coming off paternity leave today. Gave birth to his first son, Luca. Congrats to him. 2-2. Two -two. Fouled back. Hit the glove of Kirk. And Chad Green is looking better. He's starting to locate his fastball a little bit better. You see a, you see that, that velocity. Maybe a couple 96s here and there. We definitely didn't see that last year. But watching that highlight reel of him in New York, he was 98-99. 2-2. <laughs> Fly ball to right. This sends Springer back at the track. Curling to his left, makes the catch near the corner. Two down. By the way, in left field, Dalton Varsho has stayed in for David Schneider after pinch run. Two outs, top of the ninth, 5-2 Blue Jays, and Dominic Canzone is all that stands between Toronto and a home opening win. Blue Jays shift Canzone to the pull. One for three today. The first pitch. Low ball one. Over 40,000 turned out to see the Blue Jays for the first time since October 1st here at Rogers Center. The 1-0. Popped up third base side into the seats. One and one. Jose Barrios certainly didn't disappoint. Six and two-thirds. Four hits, no runs, one walk, six strikeouts. And the offense came to play as well. Five runs on 11 hits. And four runs in the first four innings. They lead 5-2. to two. The 1-1. One -one. Smoked past the second baseman, Biggio, into right center field. Picked up by Kiermaier. Canzone wants second. Kiermaier spins, throws, but it's late. The slide of Canzone is there for a double. Another good play from Kiermaier, cutting off that ball in the gap and making a good attempt at second base. He's done that a few times tonight. But some more life here for the Mariners. Nobody up. This is Chad Green's game to end. Two extra base hits this inning, including the Raleigh home run. 5-2 score. The pitch to Josh Rojas down and in. Ball one. And J.P. Crawford on deck, who hit that home run against Jimmy Garcia earlier today. Rojas hitting 350 on the year, although 0 for 3 tonight. 1 0. Swing and a miss. 95 high and tight. Tied him up. One ball, one strike. Green looking down at the mound, directs his attention to the plate. Come set. Blue glove at his chest. The pitch. Foul back, 1 and 2. 
Rightfully so, Chad Green not paying much attention to the runner on second. He doesn't matter. The tying runs on deck. Most of the 40,000 strong up on their feet, waving the towels for the home opener with two outs, the one-two. Check swing, appeal to third, no swing, and Adam Beck continues this game. It's two and two. And that was a good pitch, but it was just a little bit outside. If that ball is down the middle, it was an elevated fastball. Rojas swings right through that. Green's 2-2. Two -two. Down and in, ball three. The fans will have to rev up for the third straight pitch. One run for the Mariners this inning. Blue Jays up 5-2, runner on second, 3-2 count with two outs. Green kicks and delivers. Swing and a miss! A home opening win for Toronto, 5-2. They defeat the Mariners here at Rogers Center. And tonight was an incredibly exciting game. Jose Barrios pitched another gem. He was on tonight. The Blue Jays' offense is showing signs of life. So many good games tonight on the pitching side, on the offensive side. I'm telling you, this Blue Jays team is starting to come together. Toronto wins to go to 5-6. and six. Seattle now 4-7. and seven. We will have more on the other side following a 5-2 victory. Stick around. We'll wrap it up and send you over to Jays Talk with Blair and Barker. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball brought to you by your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center streaming at Sportsnet.ca and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to fixed-rate pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Order pizza pizza at Crown Rust Control, protection runs deep. Because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. Everyone dreams of owning their own personal slice of heaven. Now you can, thanks to Fixed Rate Pizza by Pizza Pizza. Until the end of 2024, lock into an extra-large four-topping pizza at a fixed price of $17.99. No matter how bad food prices get this year, your pizza price stays. So why not say no to surge pricing and yes to Fixed Rate Pizza? Order now from Pizza Pizza. Pizza At Crown Rust Control Center, protection runs deep because every Crown Rust Control Center is owned by a local family who cares beyond business. Your Crown Rust Control Center is 100% committed to their product, to you, to their community, which is your community. Protecting you and what matters to you is equally important as protecting your vehicle. Did you know spring's the best time of year to protect your vehicle from rust? For a special spring offer, find your local family-owned Crown Rust Control Center at crown.com. Every day I'm hustling, every day I'm Hey, hustling. this is Kevin Kiermaier. You're listening to Toronto Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Every day I'm hustling. Toronto Blue Jays baseball is brought to you by the local family-owned Crown Rust Control Centers in Hyde Park and North and South London. Protect your vehicle from rust today. Find your local family-owned Crown at crown.com, Canada's number one rust protection. The Blue Jays victorious in the home opener, 5-2. They defeat the Seattle Mariners. I'm Ben Schulman alongside Chris LaRue. And Chris, when we talk about this game we really have to look no further than our player of the game. Before we get to our thoughts on it, here are some of the best plays that we saw today, or the best pitches, I should say, from starting pitcher Jose Barrios. The 2-2. Swing and a miss. Tied him up with a slurve. Two strikeouts in the inning, and the one hit stranded. Scoreless game, middle of the second at Rogers Center. Payoff. Called strike three. 
Throws him on a front door slurve. Jose Barrios is dealing. He's gone six scoreless. Well, this, well, the story of this game was clearly Jose Barrios. He was on all night. His fastball was electric, just down in the zone. He elevated when he wanted to. Him and Alejandro Kirk were on the same page. You saw them often yelling at each other, pounding their gloves in unison. I mean, Jose Barrios has been good all season long, and not just good. He's been great all season long, and tonight was no different. You could tell he he elevates his game in big games, and the crowd was was electric when he was walking off the field in that last inning they gave him a standing ovation and i mean you have to tip your cap to jose barrios he was great tonight six and two thirds four hits no runs one walk six k's for jose barrios that was a broken bat bloop away from getting to seven innings but ty france's third single knocked him out of the game blue jays also had some great offensive contributions two hits from guerrero an infield single came around to score the second one wasn't a cheapie though a double to right field that ended up scoring kevin kiermeyer you got a double from bo bichette today justin turner just kept chugging along with a double a run scored and a walk got a base hit two base hits pardon me from david schneider and two rbis calvin biggio reached base twice ikf had his first extra base hit of the season on a two hit day the blue jays finished with five runs on 11 hits no errors seven left on base they went four for 13 with runners in scoring position which is an average of 308 on the other side seattle two two runs seven hits one error seven left on base they did not come up with a hit with runners in scoring position and because of that jose barrios picked up his second one of the season to move to two and oh luis castillo's record falls to zero and three and what's been an odd start for the mariners ace this game took two and a half hours just about 233 to be exact over forty thousand turned out to rogers center today and it was quite the game for jose barrios for the blue jays who with the win move to five and six for the mariners it's four and seven but these two teams will be back in action tomorrow hope you can join us then same time although probably a bit more of a true seven o'clock start coming up tomorrow in game two of the series between the blue jays and the mariners we'll see a pretty interesting matchup george kirby against chris bassett bassett trying to really solidify his year with a big first solid start has not picked up a win thus far and george kirby coming off a rough start himself but a really talented pitcher too that one has first pitch going at 707 hope you can join pregame as well it's the blue jays and mariners with toronto looking to pick up their first series win of the season really appreciate you tuning in tonight to this home opener it was a really fun one and we can't wait for a whole bunch more coming up at rogers center this season for my partner chris larue our technical directors tom young and austin mackey and our host and producer today show ali i'm ben shulman hope you have a great night and stick around call in we want to hear your thoughts because blue jays talk with blair and barker starts right now Hi, right, Kevin Barker, 5-2, the Blue Jays beating the Seattle Mariners in their home opener. The numbers to call, as always, 416-870-0590, star 590, one 888 590 If you're at the ballpark, it's stuck in traffic, or if you're at the ballpark, it's stuck in traffic. you got to tell me why you booed the skipper. Like, have you been waiting five months to do that? Sounded like it. I also want to know what you think about the newly configured Rogers Center. Maybe you were lucky enough to sit in the lower bowl. Tell us, tell us what it was like. It looks great. It's beautiful. It looks kind of oddly Yankee Stadium-ish in the lower bowl. Watch your mouth. Oddly, I said. 416-870-0590, star 591, triple eight triple six zero five ninety. Kevin Barker, Jose Barrios, early, early, early. So far, he's pitched to an ERA of 145. He was awfully, awfully good today. Yeah, it's the it's the best uh, uh, sinker he's had all year in my mind. This is a third start. It looked like command wise, uh, rhythm wise, timing wise, ball out of the glove. Uh, he's not rushing it. He was more pulling it. We said that today on our show that when he's doing that and he's staying in his lanes and he can command both sides of the plate, right into a righty away to a lefty, 
and then he can start backdooring the, the, the two-seamer occasionally to a righty. He can elevate the, the, the two-seamer into a righty like he can do a bunch of different things to, you know, both sides of the plate. It's not only the quadrants, it's both sides of the plate. And then once he finds the release point of that, he starts spinning it off that release point. And for me, he had three different breaking balls. He had, you know, one he could throw to a lefty that looked like a breaking ball that had more of a 12-6 break. He had a slider they could throw to a righty, and then he was throwing that sweeper. And every time he missed, it was always on the black or a little bit off the plate. Those tough, those really tough takes that you talk about all the time, that's how you get 101 pitches, 72 strikes, 39 of those are sinkers, 39 of those are sliders. He had 25 called strikes. It was exactly what the doctor ordered right you get him a lead let him pound the zone let him do it with a little confidence and then it makes it real tough for that manager to come out and take him out <laughs> and you can tell jose was a little chapped he didn't like that like no, he, he was, did not like he was it. coming off the field there yelling and screaming into his glove he wasn't a big fan of being taken out and that i think is what you want your number one guy right now to be like it's Real tough for that manager to go out there the conversation between the two is not the greatest all the time yeah and that's exactly what you want and you know, you sort of you give the ball to the lead to the bullpen, and you know they take it and run with it. So yeah, it was a good win for him. I mean, you know, you think back to what the the last time a lot of these people, sort of the last big Blue Jays event, if you want to call it that, was the postseason last year, where John Schneider took Jose Barrios out of the game mm-hmm. against the Minnesota Twins. That was the talking point all year long. And then of course Jose Barrios pitches the the home opener. John Schneider has to go to, and, and there is a great camera shot of John Schneider. He was smiling when he, like, he knew, he knew what was coming. Now, I may be getting booed a little bit during the pregame introduction. It had something to do with it. He knew as soon as he walked out there, though, that he was going to hear it from the fans. And, you know, look, it's, again, I, I want to hear if you if you were one of the fans here in booed. I, I I don't know why. I mean, there there, there wasn't know? too many people that weren't booed. I mean, they, it was pretty loud in here. That's the loudest I've ever seen a manager get booed of you. You ever you ever heard of a manager getting booed like I that? Mean, Ope, yeah, the first I under, game at home? No, not the first game at home. I know there are a lot of people who worship at the altar of Gibby, but trust me, Gibby's they first go, on water. <laughs> Gibby's first go around here, they booed his ass badly a couple of times, but not, not. I I haven't heard a manager, I haven't heard a manager boot on opening day. I just. Uh, <laughs> I just haven't. Anyhow. I mean, it can't change what you believe in, though. If you believe that Jose Brios is done and the guy you're going to will be better suited to get the next guy out, you got to yeah. do it. Like, you got, you got to bear it. Walk uh, out there and take the ball. You know, we saw signs of, of an offensive resurgence. I don't know if I want to say resurgence. We certainly saw signs that in, in the you Bronx say that, that. That, the, that the offense was coming around. No Not home sure runs No home runs today, but five doubles. Vladdy doubled a just a we we talked about that might be a best the best swing other than the home run he's had this year yep uh vladdy's double uh davis schneider drove in a couple of runs we got to talk about alejandro kirk kevin barker (laughs) he's had 15 at bats so far this year with runners in scoring position now he singled in the first inning uh he struck out in i'm sorry in the second inning struck out in the third Struck out in the fifth with runners in scoring position. Hit into a double play in the eighth. Kevin, he's come up to the plate 15 times with runners in scoring position. That's far and away the most of anybody in this team. That's, yeah. I Look, I understand. The, ga- you know, the game's the game, but um, I... I I'm just not. A, I don't know how you. I don't know how you manage around that. I don't know if you can manage. Yeah, I don't around. think you do. Look, look. I think his at bats are getting better. I mean, Luis, Luis Castillo's filthy. Like, I look. You gotta. You know, you got. You gotta stay in your legs. You got. You gotta give your barrel a chance, and not let your eyes chase Luis Castillo around the the strike zone. If you do, he's gonna take you behind the woodshed. But mm-hmm. give Alejandro Kirk credit tonight. That at least that one single with two strikes. I mean, that's staying in your legs. That's using your barrel a little bit more. Bat looked a little bit quicker. I mean, I look at the from a from the fifth guy on. Who else do you want up with runners in scoring position? I mean, I think this is where they're at, right? It's it's you're just hoping that somebody can catch fire after the fourth guy, and somebody can step up and start getting some big hits and be a little bit more mechanical sound. I will say this: Alejandro Kirk tonight bat looked quicker. I don't know about you. It did. It, it looked more like it the did. bat we saw in spring training Absolutely. than what we've seen in the regular a- season. Absolutely. So I mean, they're they're they might be doing a little praying, you know, sometimes at the bottom of that order. But 
I mean, I think they're going to keep running him out there, giving him chances. It uh, sure the, seems that way. The Jays had a couple of stolen bases in this game. The first one was a pretty big steal by Kevin yeah. Kiermaier. You're up in the press Yelling box screaming. screaming for him to go. Let's do he it. He does go. Vladdy doubles him in. Yeah. Kevin Kiermaier also made a couple of really nice defensive plays, a couple of good throws, cut off a couple of balls. It's amazing when that dude on the mound is pounding that strike zone, boy, how everybody's up on their toes and running balls down. It's amazing how that works. It, right? it looked uh, Yeah, it is. It, it looked good re- that defense It looked, looked good tonight. And oh, it, it, it does. And then. Uh, of course, the the Mariners, though, uh, I mean, a couple of home runs uh, off the Jays' bullpen. But uh, really, beyond yeah. that, Jose Barrios, man, was uh, I mean, getting he, after he was cruising. He, he was. was. He was getting When he's after. got the sinker, it, you know, it's almost like Bassett. He said he throws a little bit harder. It, when they have the sinker working, and, you know, the sinker sort of gets – Barrios into his mechanics, right? He, he's gathered over the mound, his landing spots to ride, his release points on point, and then it goes to the slurve. And when he's got those two things working, good luck. All right, I asked the question about John Schneider getting booed. You got it started, opener. didn't you? Instead of asking about the game, well, I didn't that's ask. what you got to ask. I mean, it's... Just, I mean, just I'll, pile up, pile well, on. Well, I'll tell you what. What do you think they're going to be? What do you think? The, what do you think people <laughs> are going to be talking about tomorrow, man? I know that does not happen. It does not. Tim and Hamilton, you want to address the, hammer. the booing of the manager? Why am I not surprised that the hammer would come through the first call? Go ahead, Tim. Hey guys. Well, I know I I, uh, I disagree with it um, because I didn't I didn't have as much of a problem as everyone else with the call last year. I think that, like, you know, looking at Brios' season as a whole, 2022 was so bad for him that, like, you're kind of seeing ghosts any time he did get hit. In his last game against the Yankees, he was perfect through three, and then he gave up a leadoff walk and then a two-run homer. And with the offense being as anemic as it was, like, I don't blame Schneider for the kind of clenched butt managing, if you will. <laughs> like, he had to no. get ahead of well, every fair point. No, that's so, a fair point, Tim. I think this year, you know, they just have to establish trust. It's about process. You know, um, you, know you guys are talking about five and five and, and six and four. Um, but, like, with the sort of binary approach to this year thus far, where it's either they're there or they're completely absent, there's no trust there. So I think it's, it's just about process and playing each game consistently. Yeah, Tim, that's a great point. Yep. Thanks for the call. And, and look, yeah, let, let, let's be clear. The Jays lost to the Minnesota Twins not because John Schneider took uh, Jose Brios out of the game. They lost because they couldn't big borrow or steal a hit. And, be, and because they, uh, they had some pretty, you know, some pretty shoddy base running. But I think, see, I don't think, Kevin, I don't know if the decision was as big an issue or the way it was handled afterwards. I think it's both that contributed to it. Yeah, I think like, it's both. It, it was allowed. It was allowed to fester. Um, you know, it took what? It took a couple of days before Mark Shapiro came out and kind of put it to bed. Yep. Ross Atkins really didn't put it to bed. Mm-hmm. John Schneider, you know, he did his 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 uh, post game availability and and look. It, I mean, talk to the players. Uh, there was there was a lot of there were a lot of surprised looks uh, when that when that. I don't think was there was made. a surprise with Brios. I mean, it sounds like he knew going in that this was he sort knew of going, going to be in, the case. But he did say, he did I say surprised at how well he that was I was essentially, yeah. He what what he said is I was surprised they stuck to the plan because I was thrown so and well. You're predicting and, the future here, right? Yeah. And, and when you got the future predicted, you don't want to adapt and and do something else. And I, that was sort of, you know, what you, what you were trying to do there. Uh, every little play mattered, and and I think that was part of it. When you don't win, it festers, and fans were looking for a reason to boo John, and you know they took advantage of it. It would be interesting to see if they go on a little mini winning streak here. If that will continue every time John walks I, around, it would be interesting. You know what? I think Toronto fans, Toronto fans, quite often boo the moment. They boo the situation. Probably right. And yeah, once. I hope once the season starts, you know, once we get into the grind of the season and, you know, it's a, you got a Monday night game and then a Tuesday night game, then an afternoon game, then an off day, then a Thursday. And once the season itself gets going. Um, if it's working, you stop booing. Exactly. If it ain't working. But look, yeah. I mean, let's be clear. This uh, Fans were not happy the way the season ended last year. Fans. Well, it's been two years coming. Jeff. Fans right. were not. Fans were not happy with the off season the team had. That was obvious during 
pregame introductions today. It's the quietest I can remember uh, for, for, for players. Um, you know, and that's I, Tim's right. I think there is. Maybe that's a perfect way to put it, Tim, is, it, is trust is going to have to be re-earned around Yeah, he here. nailed it. Yeah, and and, and and on the part of a lot of people. That hit, includes hit. the front office. Hit and they will come, Jeff. Exactly. Gavin in Minnesota. Whereabouts are you in Minnesota? I'm, uh, I'm kind of in the St. Cloud area right now, going to school up there for college. So um, Nice. St. Cloud uh, State. St. Cloud State. No, 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 no. St. John's. I'm kind of a private school loser, so. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. It's great country. We have, uh, I spent a lot of time in Minnesota, so it's great country. Thanks for uh, thanks for thanks for joining us. You want to talk about Jose Barrios? Yeah, I mean, just growing up, obviously with the Twins, all the time I watch a ton of Barrios. Um, I think for the most part, the most divisive question in like the Twins uh, standpoint of things for a couple of years was Barrios an ace or was he a really good number two? Um, in my opinion, it's a stuff to be an ace. I think, like, it really does come down to consistency and overall just day in and day out, you know, giving you more consistent performances. Um, I think, like, it's his blow-up starts that are really, like, what's holding him back from taking that next step. I was just wondering your guys' thoughts on that. Do you think he can take the next step, or is he just kind of a good number two? Yeah, Gavin, I appreciate the call. I mean, I, I don't... You know, the knock to, one of the knocks against Jose Brios for me, well, first of all, he's dependable, which is great. And that, mm-hmm. it, given the way pitchers are falling today, and we it's saw Fromber uh, Valdez may have an appointment with a, a surgeon at some point. Uh, given the way pitchers are falling, his predictability is important. Mm-hmm. I, I look at it this way. I don't know. <laughs> Classic definition of an ace. I mean, his ERA is 145 right now. ERAs and everything. Call it win day when they pitch. But, yeah, I, I – I, look, I love Jose Barrios. I don't see him being that guy. I see him being a very good number two guy. I don't know about an ace, though. I don't know about an ace. Uh, look, I think if he, if he starts – you know, establishing a little bit more of the cutter, you know, that will keep the, the lefties a little bit more honest. He threw six of those tonight. I think he threw, yeah, he threw six of them. And I know he got one punch out, I think, against a righty. You know, he starts that thing at their hip. He, he freezes them. It's sort of what he does to a lefty with the two-seamer. I mean, he's working both sides of the plate. That will make him a little bit more unpredictable. That will make the slurve that much better. I mean, he's a spin-first guy. Spin-first guys need to have a little trickery occasionally. Mm-hmm. And if he can add the cutter, that will give him a different pitch to another side of the plate. That will make him a little bit, you know, tougher to sort of hone in on and think along with. But, I mean, I does it matter? Like I look, I think they got what two or three number twos. I mean, Gosman, when he's raring and ready to go, and that thing's working, and the velocity's where it needs to be. I think that is your true number one, right? He's matching up against the other team's number one because of the punch outs. When you're a guy that allows the ball to be put in play, it's very hard for you to be called an ace. So that's what I said, guys that want to take the sting out of your bat instead of taking the bat out of your hand. Those are hard guys to call aces, so I'm okay with him being a really, really good number two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, I keep stressing the word dependable. Uh, he, he, he's a he's a dependable guy. Would I, you know, must I'll tell you this: must win game. Would I feel comfortable with him on the mound? Yes, I would feel comfortable. Is with it him warm in the weather, dome for Gosman? Yeah. If it's dome, if warm it's weather, dome, warm weather, oh, I'm yeah. okay. But oh. I mean, now we're talking. Okay, we're talking. I don't know. Let's just. I don't want to look ahead to playoffs. But let's say we're talking cool weather in Minnesota playoff game. I'm pretty comfortable. Well, I think they were telling you last year by putting him as the number two starter, not Bassett. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, just looking at Jose Barrios. Yeah. I, you know, again, pitching wins <laughs> don't really matter. But <laughs> well, statistically, <laughs> they, we're going to get in that argument. Is, but it's I mean, his, his ERA was three sixty five. I mean, I, again, I guess it's it's something like one twenty five right now, one forty five. Um, I, I don't know if he would ever be the classic case. Yep. But I, again, Just, for for he's he's hugely. Could they be a twenty quality team. start guy and a seventeen? Pitch per inning guy. I don't that, know. That's that's what you got to ask yourself. Th- those are what aces look like. If they if he can do that, 
I mean, more power to you. Put you in, put him in it. I just think it's the punch outs. It's allowing guys to put balls in play. You know, you need that moment where you need a punch out. That's what I said. You can add a little something different with the cutter. You can tell he's getting a little bit more comfortable throwing it, mm-hmm. and that'll make it a little tougher for a hitter. Give him something else to think about, especially second and third time through, because that's what you want him to be, right? You want to give him the ball third time through. There order. was, you know, what one of the things, a couple of things we saw from Jose Brios tonight as well. You think about. Jose Barrios, when he's feeling good, when he's pitching well, there's a lot of interaction with his catcher. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of nodding and fist pumping, Mm -hmm. and we saw that. He walks off the mound nodding to the umpire. Like there was, this was a classic Jose Barrios, just body language stuff. Everything about it was kind of. That's what you would take every time out. And the dudes chat. I I love that. Yeah, early in the year. I just like I just like occasionally every once in a while it's me against you, and how dare you even try and take me out? I got like that. Yeah, I, I, I would uh, I would love to have had a little microphone dangling in. I think on, he's on too meeting. nice of a guy to. Oh, I don't think he would ever nah, show his manager either. up or anything nah, like that. Either. But there was a, it looked very much as if there was a, some sort of conversation uh, in the dugout for. And I don't know if they really. I'm sure there was one of those things. Why? You, what you doing out here, Coach? I'm I'm pretty good today. You noticed. Four one six eight seven zero zero five ninety. Go away. Star five ninety one triple eight triple six zero five ninety. Remember it happened. We've done this before. Remember it happened the last the time you took place. me out and I was dealing. Uh, oh boy. Second game of the series is tomorrow. By the way, seven oh seven first pitch. Game three of the series is three oh seven first pitch on Wednesday. Mike in Toronto. You're on Blue Jays talk. What's up, Mike? Hey, guys, fun game tonight. Um, just wanted to comment on the booing situation of Schneider. I was one that was booing as well. Um, I just think, like, you, 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 you can't trust this guy. You know, he's your opening day starter. You can't trust him in the seventh inning. You're up by a few runs to, to face the number eight hitter after he gave up a little broken bat single to, you know, with two outs. Like, I just think that's silly. And, I, and I'm concerned about trusting Schneider when, when when there's actually really important decisions, because I'm not sure that he's capable of doing that. Yeah, well, and further to the point, I'm not entirely certain how much say he has in the important decisions. I mean, I'm sure he's got some say, but I, I, I don't, you know, I, do we still know how it transpired? Uh, I guess the way I put it this way, uh, and I'll ask you this, Mike, based on what we were told at the end of the playoffs last year when the team was eliminated, did you believe what you heard? No, I believe that was that was a front office decision. Snyder figured if he goes against it, he's you know, he's he's, he's no good. He's he's out of there, right. and I and I think that's why he would refuse to say that at the end. Um, uh, I will I say think this that's though. A front thing. I will say this though, Mike. How many pitches he th- he had? One hundred and one pitches tonight. Yeah, one hundred and one pitches. This given yeah you know, back in the day, one hundred and one pitches is nothing. But one hundred and one pitches right now. Um, I I wasn't as surprised as I. Uh, when Barrios came out of the game, I mean, I think I looked at you and said, as soon as he gets somebody on base here, they're going to take him out. Like I would, I wasn't surprised. And I know, he, yeah, I'm not my, surprised. My friend Barker, my friend Barker's up in the press box going, "Don't do it, John. Don't do it. Don't do it, John. <laughs> Don't do it." That. Yeah, he did say That's it. Exactly what I was saying to my brother who I was there with, and then I didn't see him right away, so I thought we were safe. And then you know he came out, and then he didn't he didn't point right away, so I thought, okay, he's just you know having a little conversation because he does oh, that. Oh man, I got I got to tell you, heads, Mike, if he had come out. And not taking Barrios out of the game, heads would have exploded. I mean, it would have been even it would have been even worse. Why are you you're doing it now, but you weren't doing it in Minnesota? Or if Garcia gave it up. Or if Garcia gave it up. Hey, Mike, do you think this is going to continue? Do you do you think that this is something John Schneider's going to wear? Or once people get it out of their system, you know, the season goes on, we'll kind of get back to back to normal normalcy around here when it comes to the manager. I think winning cures all, and if they're doing well in winning, then it, then it's a non-issue. Good stuff, Mike. Thanks yep. for the call. Appreciate it. Four one six eight seven zero zero five ninety star five ninety one triple eight triple six zero five ninety. Again, if you're at the ballpark today, you just want to get your thoughts on booing the manager. Want to get your thoughts on the new ballpark? Mm-hmm. Um, this is I, first time I've seen it now empty here from the press box, and it really it just it's sharp. Look, it looks better. It does. It looks the the colors look better. Look better when they start winning a ton, won't it? It'd be noisy when they start winning. How about that? Sean and Mississauga, you're on Blue Jays Talk. Hey, guys. I'm just calling to say, in general, as Blue Jays Nation, we just got to take a deep breath. 
It's a long season. We're 10, 11 games in. It's going to be all right. These are the ebbs and flows of baseball. We just got to strap in and enjoy it. Do you agree with Tim uh, about, though, there may be – there may be a need for trust to be reestablished here. I mean, I think uh, I think Tim's on. I think Tim's on to something. I don't disagree, but I think there's a bit of a hangover from last season. I don't blame Jays fans, but this is baseball, guys, and there's no crying in it. So let's get our big boy pants on. Let's play some great baseball and let's enjoy it. We're the only city in Canada that has baseball. I just find that. Jay's Nation is getting a little bit toxic, and I think it comes with the online community kind of driving the narratives. But, guys, you've lived through this. You've lived through a countless number of baseball seasons. When it's going bad, it's going bad, and when it's going good, it's never going to stop. That's how this goes. Hmm. Appreciate the call, Sean. 416-870-0590, star 591, triple A, triple six, zero five ninety. A winning edition of Blue Jays Talk 5-2. The Jays win their home opener in front of a sellout crowd of 40,069. Second game of the series tomorrow is a 707 first pitch start. Wednesday is the first work from the dome game. 307 will be the first pitch Wednesday afternoon as the Jays and Mariners wrap up the series and then the uh, Colorado Rockies come into town for guaranteed win weekend. Three games. <laughs> Friday, Saturday. Boy, you Friday, Saturday, up. it's Sunday. You I jinxed really, that. I did, I did jinx that, by the way. That's what they call the commentator's curse. We're going to take a break. We come back. We'll go back to the phone lines. 416-870-0590 star 591 triple eight triple six zero five ninety. Blue Jays talk with Blair and Barker. Timber Mart is Canada's building center, a solid neighbor to call upon when you've got a job to do. Your dependable home improvement store that offers the added value of Air Miles Reward Miles with every purchase of $15 or more. Visit TimberMart.ca. We're two men and a truck. And we've got lots of men and lots of trucks. Whether you're planning a move to a new home or to a new office down the hall, big or small, we move them all. We even sell packing and moving supplies. But no matter what you need, we'll do it with a smile. With a 96% referral rating and the professionalism you can trust, the choice is simple. So when you're planning your next move, call Two Men and a Truck. Two Men and a Truck, the movers 